First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. For seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. No doubt. Voodoo. You will be running from the magic tonight. We got Brother Panic on with Dr. Aleem, and we get ready to break down and decode some mysteries. So, Brother Panic, are you on? Yes, I'm here, Brother Aleem. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I... All right. What's up in with the you? house? All right. All right. What's been up to like? I'm chilling, same old thing, you know, kicking around the house. And as you know, um, and the people should know that soon I'm going to start hosting lectures in Atlanta. And, you know, this is not, you know, I'm not going to be doing lectures maybe in the near future, but I'm going to be bringing various lecturers in. And I believe Brother Lean was the first one that I open up bring in, so I'm going to do the same thing to get that luck going. And so we're discussing now, so the, the big news on this show is uh, Brother Lee might be the first first teacher that I'm going to bring in to do a lecture. So we're still formulating it, getting places and times, but look for that, all the all guys out there who know Brother Lee's work. It's my honor to bring him in to be the first teacher and uh, hopefully a series of long lecturers and long teachers that will follow, you know, to keep this teaching going. So I've been working on that lately. All right, all right, all right. Well, I appreciate you even thinking about me. I, you know what I'm saying? When you told me that the other day, I was like, what? Okay. Where did you oh, tell absolutely. Me you me? Okay. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I used to live always been one of my favorites. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you've always been one of my favorites. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, you've always been one of my favorites. Yeah, um, yeah. And, um, shoot, I was before, um, what, I think it was 94, 95, I met Bobby, and um, we started rolling around to the bookstores and getting books and everything, and I remember being on Fulton County Library steps. Me and Bobby was um, okay. there, along with two other brothers, and he was like, man, if get his more brothers got to doing what I was doing, you know, it'd be a whole <laughs> lot easier. And I was like... You're right. <laughs> All right, Bobby, I'll do it, man. Because he already knew, right. you know, that I was already studying and stuff. And I'm like, okay, man, I'll right. do it, I'll do it. 
you know. So oh, yeah. he's basically the one who, like, convinced me in order to go on and get on the circuit and start doing some things. So big up to Brother Bobby. And, uh, oh, yeah, let's big up him. <laughs> and, I, and I can see why, you know, for me personally, I can see why because, um, you know, you know, and that's that's why again I want to bring you in as one of the first because a lot of your teachings go a long way. You know what I mean? So you know, my idea is to bring forth teachers that actually make a a, a big impact. Not saying there's a comparison, but I guess what I am saying is you made a big impact for me. You get what I'm especially early on, you know, in the study. So I just want to continue that, you know, I want I want people to benefit as I benefit and many others have benefited from it. So you're one of those teachers that do that. I always thought that, like, uh, especially for someone, you're, you're, you're a good teacher who can deal with a lot of advanced subjects, but for someone starting out, you can you could bring them into that gateway, you get what I'm saying, and, and, and you kind of walk away with having – you can go further in your own development based upon some of the things you introduce, which I've always thought was the mark of a good teacher. You know what I mean? One of those where you can introduce them to a world, and when they get into that world introduced by the teacher, they can actually develop their own thing instead of being stuck and following. So that's the kind of, you know, I think for me, um, bringing you first kind of sets the tone for what it's going to be. So, so again, I could see why Bobby would say that, um, you know, in hindsight, of course, but I could see why he had the foresight um, to see you as one of those type of teachers to do that. Right, right, right. Well, I definitely appreciate you coming on. Oh, yeah. And um, what we're going to get into tonight is the uh, mysteries of the Holy Grail, the pioneer, okay. and, you know, and shoot, uh, okay. the secrets of life, basically. You know? Okay, you can talk about those things. All right, all yeah. right. Yeah, it's like, um, I didn't know. This, um, huh? Yeah, well, well, there's a couple of things I could bring up from when I was studying this subject. And, you know, because it comes down to one thing. But there's a couple of things I could bring up. I didn't know if you had something planned that you wanted to do and I add in. But uh, there's oh, things, oh, and, no, I, no, and no. I wrote. Mm-hmm. No, I'll just say it's true. We'll go back and forth. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Okay. Um, well, you know, the Holy Grail, um, one of the biggest things that I've come across, you know, the Holy Grail, the Philosopher's Stone, and the Elixir of Life, um, they come up in the King Arthur mythology, which is Celtic. And really, as we should know by now, that all of this stuff is basically symbolic. Um, but when I was studying, I found it to be actually symbolic of two things. Uh, uh, one thing is healing, and, uh, uh, and, and, and the other thing is a spiritual immortality. Now, there's a physical healing. They, they have always said uh, the vagina can be looked at as the Holy Grail, cup of life, and also, of course, the head, pineal gland, pineal gland being the philosopher's stone. And there's two things to support that. Now, a form of it is through uh, tantra, through sex, um, and basically eating that vagina. That's a form of drinking from the Holy Grail. And, um, right. and uh, you know, the pineal gland, I mean, the uh, clitoris in this case could be looked at as the philosopher's stone. Now, that's, and, and from that, from that kind of thing, now, of course, Bobby Hemmings talked about it. Bobby Hemmings, you could have a full-course meal just eating out the vagina <laughs> alone. Now, the, but also, as you know, that you also can have epiphanies through this, of course, in healing. So on a physical level, and I have a little bit more information on, 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 on mythology that speaks to the physical level of the woman's vagina being this cup of life, this holy grail, this womb of life. So on a physical level, to bring, uh, you know, children here, this is also represented in the vagina. But when you get to the meta, uh, the both are still metaphysical, but when you get to the more occult aspect, or let's just say the second aspect, what you're talking about is your head, your pineal gland, and melanin, simple as that. And, of course, your head is the grail itself. 
Um, the philosopher stone is the pineal gland, and uh, the elixir of life is actually melanin. And uh, sometimes, and I, and I and I and I put a little note to the side. It's also looked at as the hypothalamus gland. Um, uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, the thalamus. I believe there's a, it's like a small ball in the center of your brain. Um, right. I've ref, I've seen occultists refer to it as the brain up under the brain, and they'll look at that as the philosopher's stone. But as a pot, but the pineal as a helper, they'll refer to it as the horse, and the horse is referred in the astral world as the vehicle. Before we had a car, so a lot of meditative, a lot of symbology. Jesus comes back in a horse, uh, we, right. even the headless horse, even the headless horseman who's looking for his right. head. He's on this horse, or he's activated the pineal, but his head is the thing that's missing. The same guy. Uh, uh, wrote uh, Rip Van Winkle. His name is Washington Irvin, who, if you even study him, at the very least was a Mason. Uh, he did a whole biography on George Washington and all the rest of those Masons. He also wrote Rip Van, Van Winkle, who's about a lazy guy who goes to the top of the mountain, but since he was lazy, didn't do the work. You know, you're talking about a chakra work, Kundalini work, and the, and, and the rest of the things we know that cultivate that kundalini or prana energy so it could release in your holy grail, which is your head. And Rip Van Winkle was live, so he, he died at, at on the top of this hill that he climbed because he didn't work. And then when he came down and no one knew him, it just represented that he reincarnated instead of going on to that land of immortality. You know what I'm saying? Um, it'll say the grail in, in, in the enlightenment experience uh, is is – the beginning of knowing one who is immortal, or knowing the one becoming immortal, or knowing what immortality is. And that's also represented as thinking from the Godhead. You get what I'm saying? And oh, yeah, usually, yeah, you I mean, right, I know you know. Yeah, I know you know what I'm saying. You know, I'm just the, you know what I'm saying, God, but I know you understand because a lot of this I've seen you speak on and, in fact, help me to study. Now, the grail is also represented as the caldron, which is just a pot, which is uh, vagina, and they are both symb symbolic of fertility and immortality. So the fertility represents the womb again, which is still that holy grail, and Jesus is connected to the holy grail, and Mary Magdalene is also connected to the holy grail. If you read now, William Henry's... Now, check that out. Now, now let me mm -hmm. interrupt, because... You're absolutely okay. on it, and I hope the audience is listening because y'all y'all getting damn. I mean, shit, he been on every damn ten minutes, and he's dropped so many damn jewels. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> but, we gonna get into um, it. But of course, the Vesica Pisces, you know that the the woman, the the, the vagina itself is the Vesica Pisces, and of course, Jesus right. is always in the center of that fish, which symbolizes. Uh, um, both of them together. So this goes back to the right. black Madonna. Gate, right, gateway, everlasting life. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of that. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. I so. Didn't. Wait, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, that's what's up. That's what's up. Now, here's a little, I guess it's like a poem they write, but I'll read it. The caldron or rebirth vagina is a recurring theme in Celtic tales. In the Welsh uh, story cycle, Warriors slain in battle are put into and put into it and emerged alive. Slain in battle and emerged alive. What they're talking about, as we know, when you release your sperm, they say you die. And to how do you to 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 emerge alive? To emerge alive out of that is is just a, is is another secret code or can be decoded in these folklore poems or mythology. Uh, first is the mythology, which deals with archetype energy meaning love is an archetype energy. And then there's folklore, which you say Greek mythology is just, is still comedic mythology, but they just tailor made it to fit what they look like in their story. So they took out archetype energy and just made it for them, just like any mythology would, Chinese mythology, Chinese. So, and, and I've talked about this in detail, but we once and for all can say this is all of ours. 
because we are the first, so this is our archetype energy. Any variation of the story is still ours. So when I'm saying Celtic myth, don't think, well, that's what the white man said. No, this is all ours. So most of it is kept alive because we think is what they said. Um, it, most of, they derive most of their pride from Norish mythology. And really, those are uh, from poems written by a guy named Sturluson. So it's not a mythology that is as ancient as even Kemetic mythology, not to mention Sumerian mythology. And they all have the same correspondences. So with that in mind, we can start from we can start from what we know to be ours because nothing ever really deviates from that archetype energy. So when we get so when you hear the Holy Grail. A lot of this was repeated in Celtic mythology with King Arthur. So when I studied it, I studied in that area. So we don't want to be confused, and I'll still connect it to some comedic shit. The Holy Grail or the house itself is Osiris, which is the subconscious mind. Haru is actually the philosopher's stone, the active point. Now, and, okay, so let me just finish this poem. In old Welsh Arthurian material, Arthur goes into the underworld called Anwith. To, ret to retrieve the same magical caldron. This, this is probably the origin of the uh, Grail Quest, since the caldron of Anne is the inflexible source of food, as is the Grail. So what they're talking about, going in the underworld, uh, on the immortal side, the side with the head, just talking about going into the subconscious mind. That's what all of these meditations are, all of these uh, mantras, sigils, rituals, candles, all to make contact with the underworld, which is in your own mind. There's a cosmic underworld, and there's the internal underworld, which is the subconscious mind. And also the underworld is also the vagina in this case. So you had a whole bunch of this grail, grail quest, this, this underworld, as an inexhaustible source of food is the grail. This is in this poem. So, again, Bobby Hemet already dropped that, the vagina is an inexhaustible source of food. That the the fluids in the vagina is con is connected to those primal waters of noon, an inexhaustible source of food. And melanin, and all we're talking about is just melanin. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's speak on the fluids right quick because women don't mm -hmm. understand that there's two. Um, they don't understand their own anatomy at times, and the brothers definitely don't understand if they don't understand it. But there's right. two forms of orgasm, um, particularly that comes around from the same area from the you um, from the um, you well, the, well I guess you can say from the pee hole or um, mm -hmm. you with you um, right. area. Um, mm -hmm. It's basically called known as a clitoris ejaculation or orgasm. Right now, what right. happens is that um, is that watery ejaculation that sprays and gushes out. And that's one, you know, that's mm -hmm. the one that's the least generally known or the least known because, mm -hmm. you know, even because they think it's that it's urine. Right. <laughs> so, you know, and unlike mm -hmm. urine, however, it comes from the periurethial, um, or what's called the, um, right. the skinny glands, you know what I'm saying? And so, which is located on the interior wall of the vagina, um, right mm -hmm. under the lower end of the um, urethia, and, you know, basically is making up the, what is called the G-spot, you know, during sexual arousal. Right. Now right. what's going on is that what this, I think the scientists found out that the fluid contains like glucose, which is sugar, and enzymes, which is prosthetic um, acid, phosphorus. Now that's the same component <laughs> within the male. It's up. It's just like prostate fluid, but without the sperm. Right. You know, right. 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 And the other two substances is um, urea and um, creatinine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now that. Now, this substance is different than the milky substance that they might see in the porn flicks, you know, when right. they get wet, you know, right. or, you know, or, you know, might have a vaginal orgasm. This is the, you know, the cup that they actually refer to, the fluid right. that fills up right. the cup. You know, so most women right. can gush as much as, like, a cup and a half to two cups of this fluid when ejaculating. You know mm. what I'm saying? And that, of course, mm. that's based on, you know, how hydrated a woman is, of course, and, and the taste right. of it is based on her diet. You know what I'm saying? Right, she has right, a right, right. Diet, you know what I'm saying? That is what produces those, um, as Bobby would say, the OGs and the Kali's, right. you know, right. and so and forth and, and so on. Right. right. 
right? So, mm-hmm. you know, so, you know, what it is that women be thinking that they get ready to urinate, so they hold back. So hence the reason why right. they don't have to orgasm. <laughs> you right. know, they think they have right. to urinate instead of just going ahead and pushing it forth, you know, and um, and doing what they need to do. So these are just some little clues that I, I got to, you know, point out, you know, most importantly, I remember you taught on it before that they were finding in um, so-called fibroid tumors, nails and hair that, right. you know, that it was actual babies that they were finding. I mean, and this is a whole, a woman is a whole self-contained system. And I believe right. it was you as well who said the penis is just nothing more than a key. Um, and you're you're unlocking these mysteries, basically. You get what I'm saying? You're unlocking these mysteries. So um, there's so I'm sure there's just so many things in a woman because there's times you could, in, in, as you know, you could be with your queen for a long period of time, and y'all tap into things y'all didn't even know y'all can tap into. A lot of it is with thought, with how mood. You know what I mean? feeling, and, and then you try to recreate the motherfucker, and it's like, this shit just ain't clicking like it was. It goes back to this median thing. You know, there were, there, there were times. Now, when I, um, when I was practicing with, with women who I was with, it was um, it, a, a lot depend. you know, it was a lot had to do, I noticed, with a lot of their thought. You know what I mean? Um, it, you know, the more reserved, of course, the more reserved, but the more free they were, not just hoes, but just free in with who they were with, you know what I mean? Um, I noticed we tapped into a lot of spiritual things, not so many physical elixirs, but so many right. spiritual zones. But mm-hmm. ultimately, th- that was my goal, so many different realities, so many different um, uh, 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 forms of epiphany, you know, so many different forms of enlightenment um, without all the stress and mess, just with synchronous thoughts, you know what I mean? So, you know, yep. it's clear in any tantric relationship, one of the keys is love because that pretty much synchronizes the thoughts in the beginning. But anything else, um, the, just just I, I see most people are hurt because they don't understand the possibility. You know what I mean? If I was telling the story, I said, well, when I usually talk to women, they'll tell you straight up what they cannot do. You know what I mean? Guys, too. You know what I mean? No, this is what I cannot do. But if if they understand more of the possibilities, then the sky is the limit. You know, so that's what the you know that's what I think the whole study was for to tap into the unknown. And when you tap into the or at least have the mindset for tapping into the unknown for these things to come online, because all of these things do come online. Um, there was one girl I had who couldn't squirt, who did practices and made herself squirt, but she felt she could do it. You know what I mean? We we we're still so sexually repressed. Like you got women talking about, I didn't even know I was supposed to have an orgasm. I do you one better. This is something Bobby shared with me. I was like, yeah, I know it was hard to, you know, when you were t- dealing with the dark side. He said, actually, when I started talking about that in the '90s, he said the black community ended up with a spoon. He said, when I started talking about Hindu mythology, which was more sexual. He said, people who had me coming in for lectures for years stopped bringing me in. People cursed yep. me out. I heard people yelling. People would say stuff. And I damn near got hate mail. This is what he's telling me when he started talking about the sexual thing. So the sexual thing is more of a hot topic with us than Satan, so it seems. You get what I'm saying? So yep. with, that yep. Repressive, yep. With, that, you know, with that repressive thought, you know what I mean, it's really – you know, you know, it's really such an uphill battle. But, you know, one of the things that I do and always count on before I get into the elixir thing, um, uh, with, because, you know, what I do know is the feminine elixir is, 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 is a pathway, almost a shortcut, you know what I mean? Um, and it, it, it's the, probably one of the best shortcuts anyone could ever take. But at right. the end of the day, we're still just talking about melanin, which you own your own. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So the idea is through, through the sexual thing, you still have your epiphanies. and But ultimately, man or woman alone, they have to bring it up to the head eventually. You know what I mean? So the, the, the idea is supposed to be what, what, what I personally got from it is the sexual practice 
is a, a part of it, but eventually, you know, eventually it has to be self. It has, you have to rely on yourself um, to eventually join the quantum collective, if you will. The, it, it, you know, if, if, you, if you see what I'm saying. So the, the, the fertility thing, you can realize, well, let's look at it this way. You can realize all those things through sexual practice, but ultimately you're going to have to get in yourself. And there, I have some notes on, on actually how at the end of the day it's just you, your spine, your chakras, your pineal, and your realization. And and the sexual thing is supposed to help you get to that point. You know what I mean? Now I also noticed that, or, or I, one of the things I realized and was able to work with was the vagina is a gateway. So the realization through the gateway um, is is what I focused on, and usually me and the woman had the most success that way. You know what I mean? It's, in other words, I didn't look at what she couldn't do, but looked at the archetype of her vagina and what we could do, it being a gateway. And usually usually the most success I had that was more that way, you know what I mean? Conjuring something through her vagina through sexual tantra. So whatever realization it was or whatever deity it was, for me it was mostly bringing deities through her um, if it's a feminine deity, me as the consort, masculine deity, me becoming the deity and her being the consort, but bringing that energy, which whichever energy I was dealing with and had a lot of success that way. Um, I had terrible success uh, trying to get in this position and that position and breathe and do all of that. Uh, that, you know, and I'm sure that works for some. That just didn't work for me. Um, just the focus was off. So what it was was synchronous thoughts was, like, the best thing. And it took us out of the focus of, like, whatever she may have limited herself based upon her life or my limits based upon my life. It took us out of that, and it synchronized, like, a common goal. And once we were able, once we were able to do that goal, you know, and I, I'm not the first one to invent that. You know, they have that in the uh, the, the sexual kung fu, and that's basically a, a you know one of the uh, main things of ta- uh, a tantra. But we would do things like breathe each other's breath, you know, and all the rest of that. But long as our thoughts was right and the goal was right, and and we did any other ritual to set that up, we always have success. Um, so I've never really, you know, the the, you know. It, it, it all depends on your power, you know what I'm saying? Like, again, and I bring it, and I know this is controversial, and I'm not the first one to say it. Bobby's the first one to say it, but I also did my own study and my own lecture on menstrual blood and already documented it. Now, you'll see, and I, as I go on, let's say you're not going to eat menstrual blood. We're not talking about cups of it. We're talking about just doing any magical work. That period before the blood comes, when the woman's supposed to be the so-called craziest on a cycle, that's when that and 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 I actually when we'll get up to that, um, um, but that particular time period is just very good just to have sex on. You get what I'm saying? Um, for conjuring or that gateway because involuntarily certain elixirs are also in that blood that go naturally without them knowing, and because they have accepted that they are supposed to release this liquid. You could say they weren't supposed to or a little bit or a lot or never. I'm not even getting into that debate. But in in the blood, in those bloods, and I, and I went down through a whole lecture through it, there are certain things that also release then more than just toxins. You get what I'm saying? They could be looked at as toxins if you're trying to be human. But if you're trying to do something spiritual and realize something beyond humanity, you would have to deal with it. You get what I'm saying? And it's not really just always ingesting it. I want to, you could just mix it with your sperm, put it on your altar, and have have these experiences as well. So, there, I mean, there's so many things, as you know, I don't want to stay just in this area, so many things you could do with the, you know, with the vagina and with, with anything that comes out. You you know, it, it's still salvageable. You know what I'm saying? It's still salvageable, oh, yeah. and I know it's a. And this is how I can guarantee is. Well, I don't want to say all of that, but this is how you know when you watch porn, there were like three women who were squirting, not that white goo, but truly squirting. 
Now right. they have entire squirt videos of all of these girls who could squirt. It's almost like once they said you can do it, right. people, women started doing it. You get what I'm saying? So, it's, so, again, I'm just only trying to back up. It's really in the mind. You know what I mean? We know we can do all of these things, but we, but the, the repression is what's keeping us back. You know what I mean? The repression is what's keeping us back. And as I pointed out, Bobby said he they sucked up the devil, but the sexual re, uh, when he in, uh, injected the sex, that's when he had the problem. So that's where we have the problem. I think the solution is we have to look past what we was doing and start dealing with the archetypes that you can't, that no one can't disturb. The vagina is a gateway. No matter what you do, you could be a retard, but you can still have a baby. It's a gateway. So it's, as it's a physical gateway and a spiritual gateway, as someone who's adept or, or, you know, you should be able to know how to utilize that gateway as well. Those elixirs are more for us, to, for enlightenment, but I think we're at the point now in the game where, where we're dealing with the head, you know what I'm saying? In other words, if, if we had no personal woman anymore, we could still get it done. So I, I don't know if that was too long and too run on or if it was even good, but, you know. That was, this, that this was, that was beautiful, God. And shoot, okay. I mean, uh, if they listening, they, guess, they got a whole lot of, out of that. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so. Wait, now, now, y'all might, you know, think, now, Brother Panic just said that, you know, he heard um, Bobby say it, but this is something in which that Bobby got also, in which that actually was from a book that we read um, mm-hmm. back in the 90s, in which that was um, dealing with the Gnostic texts. And the Gnostics mm-hmm. actually used to practice um, um, that, you know, if they masturbated or if they um, ejaculated, mm-hmm. they actually would take the semen and, um, you know, possibly the menses of the woman's cycle mm-hmm. and mix it with wine. And they would drink right. And, um, right, and that would, um, you know, bring forth some type of regenerative um, process within the um, within the cells. And if you right. think that this is crazy, well, medical science asserts that at least one drop of semen is manufactured right. out of forty drops of blood. Uh, blood, you know right? Saying? And Yarveda, and the Yarveda, it states that the semen is is elaborated out of eighty drops of blood. Therefore, it takes right. forty drops of blood to make one drop of semen. What, you know, semen. then right. it would take 400 drops of blood to make 40 drops of semen. Now, we're talking right. about um, within just one tablespoon of semen, you know, according to scientific research, you know, that's equal to two um, pieces of meat, <laughs> a steak, 10 eggs. Right, right, right. Right, that's a full-course meal. Right, you right. got a full-course right. meal. Right, right, right. That's right. protein, vitamins, minerals, amino acids, everything. You know, right. so when you talk about the dying process, well, in the ejaculation, you know, um, you know, oftentimes coming, well, the precise word should be going because everything right. vital of energy, millions of live sperms, hormones, and nutrients go away. You know what I'm saying? That's right. according to Dr. Stephen Chang within his book, Thousands of Sexology, that he builds on that. And um, right. the crazy thing is that you talk about three milligrams of zinc in which that is lost. And mm-hmm. a, a tall sign, a tall tail sign of the zinc loss is actually like white spots on your fingernails. So brothers mm-hmm. in particular have to be careful about um, the zinc loss. And, of course, pumpkin seeds eaten on a daily basis or pimento, picking um, right. you know, other, you know, herbs such as um, only goat weed, damiana, yohembe. Mm-hmm. These are things mm-hmm. in which that we definitely need. The women, um, they can use down quai, mm-hmm. red raspberry, um, you know, and Damiana, you know, um, for their, um, you know, healing or, you know, deficiencies in which that occurred during the menses, you know, because that's the time that they lose their energy, you know, um, is during that time period. But that loss is also a gain, as you just made mention of, and it can be a gain if it is done properly, just like the loss right. of the semen can also be a gain you know, in which that, you know, you might, um, um, you know, doing these um, so-called Johnson & Johnson, uh, 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 Master & Johnson reports, they might say something like, oh, okay, um, you can, oh, well, you ejaculate, the woman can use this um, semen on her skin as lotion. Right. right. You know, I mean, but, oh, yeah. you know, that that's about as far as they want to go with their information, you know, saying, and right. like you said, if we go any, if we go 
too far with it, you know, boy, you know, like Bobby says, she, right, you, she might right. not get a lecture too. <laughs> you right. know, you totally, but, right. So now, well, let me let me also add this because this is some of the spiritual things I uncovered. Um, you know, I don't think we're talking to too many people who maybe heard me a time or two on this show. They, you know. Right. And I say that without, you know, I say that in not a bragging way, but I say that to say that, you know, my whole thing before I opened my mouth was for my own enlightenment, my own spiritual discovery, my own, you know, studying before I even decided to want to speak on it. So a lot of these things, a lot of these things that came up, um, and you have to take it, I've, I've, everything I've talked about is how people can re- have these same realizations. So one of the realizations that I had, because my biggest thing was to talk to spirits. And my conversation with them, you see, and not just to talk to, like, my aunt and Osiris. I was trying to, I was talking to Hitler and them niggas, see what that shit was really about. You know what I'm saying? Real <laughs> shit, real information that we could use. This has happened already. This is documented right, right. that it's happened. You know what I mean? This is, this is a clear thing. Now, one of the things I asked about was the sperm. Now, and it's interesting we're talking about this Holy Grail thing. As we know, they'll say sperm travels to the head, right? right. And right. and what's what's really impregnating people or the women is actually the solar phallic energy on the sperm, the light right. that's around the sperm. So now, right. Right. sperm itself, once you enter the level of the Godhead or the Holy Grail, those cosmic zinc and cosmic nutrients, you're actually pulling from there, meaning you could jerk right. off every day and not deplete your physical energy. We're talking two things. You're either using your body's energy or spiritual strength. You've heard, heard mm-hmm. Bobby Hemmings mm-hmm. say before that I could talk for eight hours because it's right. them talking, not me. And and right. then I've heard, then he's told me there was one time he was on 125th Street didn't do any libations, not like it depends on libations, but it was him talking. He was absolutely exhausted after three, four hours because right. um, it was him using his energy. So that concept right. holds true in a lot of places. There's a cosmic, we know if there's zinc down here, there's a cosmic zinc. So the idea That's spiritually is for you to be able to tap into that as your source. You're, you, you're, right. pulling, you're pulling from something besides your physical will to to, right. to tap into these things. You know what I'm saying? Now, right. for instance, back in the days, if we wanted to have a artist as a child, we would think it up before we impregnated our wife. At, if we wanted to have a Malcolm X or a, or a Jesus Christ or a, 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 any any fat, a butcher baker or a candlestick maker. In fact, that's why they would say, in, in still today in these ancient cultures, with the caste system before it was used for its racist purposes, meaning if you were born to a farmer, you were born here and you made the choice to be a farmer. This also shut down the ego. You didn't have that option to say, well, I want to be a lawyer, doctor. I would like vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream. They were shutting down the ego. You ate one fucking thing. You did what your father did. You give them saying you marry who they told you to marry. They cut out choices. You give them saying for the purpose of streamlining the ego so you can live your purpose you were born unto for your revelation down here, even if it is to be a street sweeper. That's why you were here right. if your father was a street, street sweeper. So the idea of you, this whole, even you take this heroic line, this, this, these, these kings and queens, by them recycling within the same family, keeping, the, keeping it, well, we would say, oh, that's incest, but keeping it pure because the idea, it was the thoughts that needed to be cultivated or maintained. So as a, as, as a priest, a shaman, spiritualist, you're, you should be able to not deplete your own solar phallic energy, not deplete your own energy. Not, you know, that's a, that's a while to do that. that. You know, not everybody can do that. So everyone should need to listen and just say, look, you're losing three milligrams of zinc. You need to replace that or watch what you're doing. But the idea is to get to that point where where you're not losing it in the body because at the end of the well, day, that's, you that's, can just that's, you, Mm-hmm. Right, that's yes, that's right. where the sciences of qigong and you know, um tai chi come in at, as well as also brain ah, killing and rape. Okay, alternative healing is that you can pull, like you said, from the universal life force energy. Right, you know what I'm saying and concentrate within you. You know, which the kundalini is that. But however, uh, whenever um 
like you said, those who are unaware are, are right. who are not right. up to that conscious level and cannot draw forth from the um, universal energy, you know, they themselves use their own energy and deplete themselves. So, um, like right. you say, um, that's the master of these sciences. And, in fact, right. you know, the semen is 21% brain cerebral fluid. You right, know? cerebral fluid. And um, if you so, go, right. go to um, the Holy Quran, I think it's the 86th chapter, the 5th through the 7th verse, it goes like, um, now let man but think for what he is created. He is created from like uh-huh. a drop, immunated, proceeded from between the backbone and the ribs. So it's speaking uh-huh. about the fact of um, the sperm um, descending from out the heavens, you know, right. down the backbone, which, of course, is the 33 vertebrates mm-hmm. and um, mm-hmm. rib area to reside within um, the testicles, you know, to be gushed forth. So, I mean... Right. This everything that we talk about. This is all um, chemically, medically, occult, <laughs> esoterically, right. metaphysically lined up, <laughs> all right. connected. Right, astrologically, right, right, all connected. Right, you know, right. So you can line, you can down. line it up, and, and it can be backed up. Right. It, yeah, exactly. Right. So I mean, so you know, where I was going is that you know, so I talk from the context. Uh, usually when I talk as if 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 you're hearing this then you have basically made it or you're on that path. So I always speak in the context of no, you, you should be doing that. So people will have something to shoot for instead of buying just zinc at the store because you may need right. to do that now. But you know, I usually speak as no, if I could do it anybody could do it. You know what I'm saying? If I could accomplish this, it wasn't really that hard. It just took it just took a love and dedication for knowing that it can happen. And and right. doing whatever it took to make happen, you know, I have the faith that we all can do it. So I usually talk from as if we're, you know, on that level. So, but I right. know, you know, you know, not everybody did. Not everybody even thinks they should be having sex. You know what I mean? Right. So, to, to keep on the subject, um, and and because uh, and as we got to or where we was going to, we was going to the head in terms of how the Holy Grail. Uh, 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 pertains to the head as well, and I, I, I got a lot of stuff on that, so I'm gonna get into a little bit of, of that stuff as well. Um, now, if, if you're ready for me, I'll go. Oh yeah. Okay, okay. In the Celtic myth, in the Celtic mythology, um, uh, there's an item called the cauldron of the head of Hades. Even though Hades is the Egyptian deity, they still speak of the head of Hades, and um, which is which to be found at uh, Kehar Pet, Petrivan, Kehar Petrivan, the Four Cornered Castle or the Fire Castle. Now, when they talk about this house, they're talking about your head. When they talk about four corners, they're talking about your head. That's why they always tell you to think outside of the box. The Fire Castle is nothing but the Kundalini Risen. So, so. Uh, uh, the cauldron or head of Hades is the fire castle. The, so, again, it comes down to that same thing we know, illuminated kundalini as the holy, uh, the place of the holy grail or, or the grail or the, or the cauldron itself. This castle was a spe- special and magical place where the people were said to drink sparkling wine. Whenever you see that sparkling wine, you know they're talking about melanin. They're talking about that elixir of melanin. They also refer to the uh, the period blood as wine as well. And, again, I, like I said, I did a whole thing on that before. Now it says, the word care, which is found at K.R. Ped, Pedravan, the word care itself means hill or sacred mound, hill or sacred mound. So when you hear hill or sacred mound, they're talking about the pineal gland, the the there's in Egyptian mythology this hill that first derived out of the waters of noon is called Pn. There's a god named Pn that sits in that hill. That hill in Egyptian mythology is also called the field of reeds, and in Greek mythology the Eucerin fields. And it's said to it's said to be the first place of the quantum world. That's why when you see in the movie Gladiator, each time he would die. Um, he was he was walking through this field, uh, which looks like wheat, but 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 it's it's there 
version of the Field of Reeds or this place called PN. Also, in the movie Knowing, with uh, uh, that that one that just came out, uh, it's about the 2010 with Nicolas Cage. In the end, the two kids, they were also walking through this field of reeds. There was another one I can't remember. In, in wheat, right, because that represents the afterlife. Now, there was one time I died in my sleep and seen this field. I can, I'll just was keep this short. Um, I think um, that, that was shown, too, on the um, movie Gladiator, wasn't it? Um, was yes, Gladiator. The, yeah, that's what I'm saying. The yeah. Gladiator. Like, yeah, that's field, what I'm saying. Right. They always show that. Yeah, wheat, that right? yeah. yeah, that wheat. Each time he would die, he was walking to this house through this wheat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was, a, there was one more movie where they did that, but it's clear. That's deep in Egyptian mythology. Oh, it was oh, but that, it's um, actually, also with Robin Williams, where dreams may come, when he was running. Yes. You know, that's, after that's the one. Yes. He jumped off that the was his he was idea of heaven. Yes. Right. yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yet another one. And which is one of the baddest, bad-ass movies on the astral world. When that's they went right. through that, right. they went through the Akashic Records and all of those things. You know what I mean? They gave Herbie you misinformation. Corey, like, Right. They right. It was we. Every that was his. That was his dream. And he was like, "You're painting this dream." That's where he landed with his dog Anubis. You know what I mean? And that's right. yeah, that's one of the baddest movies on the astral world. Like, uh, um, even when he when he was going to go on that cosmic boat, and they showed nothing but black people. They showed the chaos realm, and he said, "Nah, your your wife is not on that boat." But they was going to go on that cosmic boat, which is the solstice, which is the boat right. of Cap- Captain Hook. And Peter Pan, right. they talk about the soul. It was that cosmic boat, and they in in that movie they showed it was all colored folk. They in the mm-hmm. actual actors were all not just in makeup, but they were actually black. You know what I mean? About eighty five percent of them showing that you, that that's the real realm. He was in that astral world, and they also said in that movie all this shit where you go in the astral world, the world is based on or uh, based upon thought. You get what I'm saying? So based upon her degraded thought, and then they gave you the misinformation in the end, it was like, we're going to go back to Earth and do all this shit again. It's like, wait a minute. You just went through some bullshit. You might as well chill here. You know what I'm saying? Just the mere fact that something that ridiculous can happen is enough to say, I ain't going back to that motherfucker no more. But they did right. at least point out that that boat gets you, symbolically gets you out of the astral world. They say... Physically, what happens when you die is those jet streams that that are on the earth. Your spirit, your soul is actually following those jet streams, and the last jet stream goes from the west, just like we have the one that comes from the west coast to the east coast, from the west to the east, and you go to the north, where the magnetosphere is the thinnest, and the magnetosphere is the web of ISIS. So that's that's where you meet Ra in the sun boat and you go through the sun. So they said the souls are actually doing that. They showed that shit in the third Pirates of the Caribbean when up was down and down was up and all of that shit when he went to Davy Jones' locker and they showed the souls in the boat going to the north where it was represented he was going. They showed the boat screen across the sky, which was cosmic. So they say you also can get caught in the Allen belt in that area. So the Davy Jones locker was represented as the Allen belt with, uh, uh, in, in that movie. So they show, and this is, this is from the book of the dead. And, and a good interpretation of that is the ISIS thesis by Judy King, Judy K King, where she goes into that interpretation, which you see played out in that movie. But it is from one of them, the Book of the Gates, or one of them that she's she's breaking down. And it so they show it all the time, the move, how you're supposed to move out of here, and 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 all of those all of those damn things. And they show it in these movies all the time, what dreams may come. But that in world, what's now what we get in this? They call this this. If you look at it from the cosmic side, out of the waters of noon, they have this mound. Like, you know, the, the Native American mounds, uh, that, that primordial mound, is represented as the pineal, this first thing coming into matter. And it's called the god of this is Pien, which is Pan, which is the baby harper crotch, or Pien, pineal gland. So, that, right. so this field of reeds represents the pineal gland. And as you see in the movies that we lined out, they walk through the field of reeds and then get to their home. 
So the pineal gland is the vehicle to get to the home, which represents the immortality. So right. this firehouse, this house of fire, or this the kundalini energy, you, it, it, it's just nothing more than the same process we already know about dealing with these particular chakras. Let me say it now, if nobody should know by now. I've been selling herbs for the last two years. I sent you some, Tulian. I don't know if you got your package yet. Uh, that that help with the pineal. I call it the pineal plat pack. Everyone should know. Email me p a n i c p a c k at hotmail. Get you one. It works with your pineal. Deals with the calcification. It's not an experience that gets you high. It's all natural herbs. You can eat every one of them. Put them on your dinner. The only warning is if you have a lactating baby or pregnant, I would say not use it. Um, but this is all natural. You can either smoke this or you can drink it as a tea. What it would do is start to work with your pineal, activate your pineal. So everyone has told me a different story once they dealt with these herbs. I've channeled these herbs way on when I was doing my own thing, and later the spirit told me to sell them. And it's been two years, and the story speaks for itself. So, so it's the pineal is key as how you're going to get a subspace message out, they say, in Star Trek. But what you're actually doing is starting to have a quantum reality. And, you st- and, and, and of course, this all goes with lucid dreaming, astral traveling, traveling practice, which eventually goes to lucid dreaming, so you can start to become competent in that state of mind. So you can bring back some usable information um, um, to this reality. So, so the herbs that do that, uh, astral traveling, lucid dreams, that's, and, and meditations, all of these things need to be done because you're taking an inner journey within yourself to open up that pineal gland. Once that pineal gland is open or, 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 or working or you're competent in that world, the sky is the limit. So this, this chaos or fire hill, or I'm sorry, or, or uh, uh, fire castle, which is the illuminated head, um, which is which is the Holy Grail, a sacred mound, a reference to the primordial mound, the ancient shamanistic concept associated with the vortex of creation. In other words, this this Kr Pedravan, the four cornered fire castle, represents both primordial mound and the matrix of creation itself. It's also home to the cauldron of the head of Hades the head of the god of the underworld or the afterlife. Hades is also Osiris. Hades is also Osiris. So this represents, the the Holy Grail represents the head of uh, Osiris. The journey, the journey represents, uh, uh, or the redemption represents, and Arthur also has to redeem his father. Redemption represents Horus or the battle of Horus and Set. Set not evil in the classic, but set representing matter or 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 your conscious thought itself that interrupts your subconscious revelation. The ego itself is set. The ego itself is set. Not where he's going to do right. something bad to your child in the and an elevator. Control. And right. and but, but set also represents our old rulership too, it's meaning. There was set worship before it was the the, the Big Dipper was the uh, chest of Osiris. It was the thigh of Set. Uh, Mog Morton's book he goes into the detail of pre dynastic worship of Set in that book. Mog now, Morton. That, now that goes right back to the Old Testament in um, Genesis, where it speaks about Jacob was wrestling with the angel. Well, of course, within the mm-hmm. um, Jewish traditions is Uriel, which is nothing more than Lucifer, and he was hitting right. his thigh. You know, and right. then he was, a, you know, his name was changed and he ascended, you know, because the name was ah. Israel, which means to ascend to God. So um, definitely I, that, that's where all of that comes right. from. Right, right, mm-hmm. same same correspondence. Now, um, now in, even in Mog Morton's book, they said the pre-dynamic Egyptians used to cut themselves up in their burial rites, which later became Osi- uh, set, cut up Osiris. And Bobby used to say it, but I got this confirmation myself. He used to say, well, what the priest would do was take some of the old worshiping ways and demonize um, because the people were old with, let's just say, Set. They would have to demonize Set to give you a new god, which you could say is Osiris. And to demonize Set in Set's mythology, 
they would uh, uh, encode the old ways. In, in the, I said, oh, that makes sense. But then I seen two things. I seen it straight out in a book. Um, it was a book I got at Strands. I, I, I mean, I could tell you the name. It's one of them really old books with a lot of pictures. I mean, it's, it's, it's Egyptian mythology by Veronica Irons. Um, but in it, she talks about, she talks exactly that. All the priests encoded old things. And then I found more proof. They said Kunsu, um, I believe, yeah, Kunsu is the old Tahuti. And then there's a mythology where Tahuti beats Kunsu in the chess game. So so I remember somebody saying, well, Kunsu, Tahuti beat I, I said, no, that's a prime example of them trying to tell us something, which means Tahuti is the new Kunsu. It has nothing to do with Kunsu right. being less or more right. but that they were right. in other words it proved it proved that they used to that's how they did it it would seem like the new ones were beating them or somehow they would demonize the old ones and then bobby also right. made another point he said um to the new christian judaism which was before it was evil and then to to the islam christianity was evil meaning these things right. these things are happening now they 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 get uh they get uh uh cast as evil as we move on. So that makes a pl- plenty of sense. So there are a few books on set worship, and, and they, the movie Conan, um, which the, they actually got a movie about the guy who wrote Conan. They said, and they showed it in the movie, but the story is, which they do show in the movie, um, I think, uh, what's that girl who was in Jerry Maguire, the ugly one that squints? She was in it, and... <laughs> Um, what's the dude? I I wouldn't even know his name, but the dude was in the cell with the the big dude that was in the movie The Cell with Jennifer Lopez. Pat Renee Zellweger and this dude, he he's an Italian dude. Um, right. if y'all know your movies, he played Pile in um in 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 that Army movie. Uh, I don't even remember that name to do the reference. Long story short, they did it about this guy who wrote Conan's life. And he used to be in trance when he was writing the movie Conan. And we all know in the movie, the Arnold Schwarzenegger Conan, we got you, you see uh, 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 the black man, James Earl Jones, turn into that snake, okay. which was a temple of set worship at that time in Sumerian right. time. So now, now in, so, so in the Mog Morton book, um, it brings it to the, to the Osiris thing, and um and 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 basically Osiris is nothing. You don't hear this nigga frolicking in the park. You don't never hear him. You know his college life. Nothing. He is the Os- He is the subconscious mind. You get what I'm saying? And you can look right. at that whole subconscious as him as the pineal and the sun behind the sun, which is the pineal and all of these things. But his, but what's being played out is his resurrection. So now for us, um, set worship represents who we were when we before we came here and ruled. So us coming down here as set and moving on to eventually Horus, the tale of two brothers. Ye get behind me, Satan, which is nothing but set behind Horus, which is not, nothing more than a representation of our transformation down here. And we're fighting our own selves, our own ego, which represents as the old us, not evil in the classic sense, but as that old becoming something new. So that also, Horus represents the cup or the grail. Osiris and Set are basically the same thing. That's, uh, well, uh, Osiris became more of that subconscious mind as the god of the dead, which represents your subconscious mind. It, it is, it's, 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 you know Osiris is there. But it's just is, is dead because this conscious mind or your ego rules, sets ruling. So each time you're doing some work, which is Horus, Kundalini chakra, meditation, breathing, fucking, nay, eating, whatever you're doing is representing you taking steps to redeem your subconscious mind or your true mind or yourself. Or it's the quest for the grail, in a, uh, or, or the quest for the grail is telling that same story. You know, once again, remember the cows are on the head of Hades. Hades is the lord of the underworld, which is nothing but your subconscious mind now in the underworld. Hades, Osiris, same thing. Head of the god of the underworld, or is also known as the god of the afterlife. Um, 
says trans state was the only uh, initiatory experience, a state of consciousness which led to a kind of rebirth or resurrection. In other words, um, trans state is experience that is an experience that will trigger another experience, namely the enlightenment experience. Now, most people, when I hear them meditating, they're usually meditating for a better body, which is just as fine. Meditating with the chakras, which is fine, but at the end of the day, we got to remember the chakras are a ladder, and every ladder goes somewhere. When you arrive at a destination, it's rare you talk about how great the steps were or how great the airplane was. You talk about the destination, but you do want to make sure you are on a uh, uh, some sort of valuable uh, 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 valuable bridge to get there. You get what I'm saying? Um, even I did something on Norwich mythology, and they talk about the Biforce Bridge, which you can see in the movie Thor. And it's the bridge to other realms. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Said by Hemondal. And Hemondal, Hemondal's energy was Guru. When, when Guru passed, Guru came to his Hemondal, and then they announced they was doing Thor, and then they announced a black man was playing Hemondal, right. which is the so pineal that blank. Same bridge, that same bridge was shown um, in... Um, in the transitioning of um, in um, I think Dragon Ball Z. Ah, you know, okay. When Goku, um, when he died, he um, or when he had to go into the um, you know, the other planes in order to see the um, you know, the um, I think the the good guy, you know, he had to uh-huh. go across this bridge every time. So, uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, that bridge is always shown. And they represent it as the rainbow or the actual rainbow with right. a pot of gold in the leprechaun. Representing mm-hmm. the pineal gland or best or, or harper crotch or pan again, PN, that same right. concept over and over. See, one of the things, see, I, I bullshit you not. One of the things I loved about Aline was one of his meditations, he used to say, look, we ain't got time to touch each finger to our thumb. You make a fist where you tap into all that shit at once. Give him a saying, which, see, that kind of shit was inspirational to me because it said, oh, it helped me to form it. I get it. I'm not going to waste my time with the ooms and the ahs. I'm going to assume I did that shit right. And then, as this book <laughs> says, I want to namely having a fucking enlightenment experience. I don't want to do all this shit just so I can walk around oppressed but feeling good. You know what I'm saying? I ate my spinach today. How about you? Like, no, I want to have something outside of the body, which means you do have to do this work. The breathing, the kundalini, eat what you need to eat to make right because you don't want your body to interrupt when you're in certain states of mind because it will. You know what I mean? In fact, I had to go back to some scratch and start drinking some spirulina and shit because I totally, I was doing so much spiritual work, I would neglect the physical, started to pay for it. So now, you know, I've got nettles and tart cherry and milk thistle and all the rest of that kind of shit just to keep it going. You get what I'm saying? So you do have to pay attention to that, but ultimately remember that goal is this body is a vehicle to go to another place. And that another that other place you're going to is another place of let's just call it a place of realization at this point. You need to you're trying to have an otherworldly realization. If you're trying to have worldly realizations, all you need to do is go on Google. So why even do this? You, Wikipedia got you if you're trying to increase your worldly if, if, your worldly enlightenment. If you, you, this is about otherworldly enlightenment when you're dealing with the quest for the grail. You get what I'm saying? The process of enlightenment through which one became transformed or reborn. So this, this rebirth is being birthed and to dwell amongst the gods. Now, of course, that rebirth factor, you you clearly understand why it's connected to the feminine and to the womb based upon the physical rebirth and and, and based upon all the healing properties in the vagina itself. That will become a rebirth, but the the ultimate to live and dwell amongst those gods is a different form of rebirth. It's a reordering of your thinking. Now, I've tried my best, and I think to some success, to explain why a lot of earthly events don't affect me in the same way. I've become what they now call the watcher. I watch that these things are bad, and I do understand no one wants to see such and such happen to a little black girl. But because I made the decision a while ago to move out of a human reality, a total human reality, let's say that, because there's nobody talking about standing on the mountain 
talking to a rock, you know, with a robe and a stick. We're talking about a big change in perspective, which is the Godhead, which is you would have to see and know something beyond here to feel it, to realize it, to understand it, to commune with it, maybe on more than just guess what happened to me the other night, to commune with on that level to really shift into something that's beyond this place. We, we don't get to say we are Lord of all the worlds, find out there's more worlds than we could count, and then hold on to earth like that. That's slavery, you know, by, you know, by any other name. The Italian word lizard means shining lights. It's similar to the etymology of the word wizard. Wizard. So whenever you see lizard, and we'll talk about the shiny one, lizard, snake, frog, they're talking about the primal energy. We know already the first circuit in the brain is the reptilian brain, um, and it is it's your damn near autonomic functions. And they said the characteristic is that loner, same, and they said that actual brain is the ceiling on any reptile brain. So with that being said, that was always represented as the kundalini life force, always. They said if you take uh, Ayacucha, any of these shamanistic drugs, no matter who you are, no matter where you're from, you see one thing, a snake, because a snake is represented as that primal life force. They said in every shamanistic culture, they use a snake. In every, every ancient culture, a snake had a, a, a place and a symbol. This is because it represents that life force. So there's a lizard. That's, again, that's why you get the name wizard. So w when you hear them trying to call these people reptilians and all of that, that that's, it, it just can't be true. They just wasn't here long enough. See, to, to, to buy into that is another way of saying, well, then they got a whole system beyond Earth that's beyond us. We can't have it both ways. We can't say, well, we created the white man on earth, and we created him here. But then somehow he has a whole reptilian system somewhere that can possibly kick our ass on planet earth or any planet. It's like it, we, we, we contradict ourselves when we say, well, they just crawled out the caves 2,000 years ago. But then, but no, no, Kabbalah is for the white man. Kabbalah, and, and this, that, that, that doesn't make any sense to me. You got to have it one way. Either we made them here and, and they running amok or seemingly running amok, or they got, or we're having this big cosmic reptilian battle with them. You get what I'm saying? It, it, it never made any sense. Now, when I, and, and of course, this contradiction. So I asked Bobby, who we know studied on, he said that came from one place originally, which was the books of Zachariah Stitcher. You know, according right. to Bobby, this came from Zachariah Stitcher. He said he was paid to put out a lot of misinformation. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. Even right. now, there's even other white fellows that, that uh, dispute this. For instance, uh, uh, the Robert Temple book, when he goes into the Anunnaki. You get what I'm saying? Um, you know, he's talking about this because the Anunnaki was supposed to be these reptilians. And they keep the story going because they show that in Predator. Uh, uh, right. Predator versus Alien, I believe. They show there was this ancient race, and they came down here. They gave us technology, but they was whipping our ass, taking sacrifices, and, of course, mining for gold. Now, I just don't get this mining for gold thing, meaning if you advance enough to travel <laughs> to another planet, you can't – even Da Vinci was, like, turning lead to gold. You you can't figure that shit out by now. You know what I'm saying? So he gave a lot of the Anunnaki – he broke down a lot of the 50 Anunnaki to the 50 stars in Sirius, the 50 solstice that later became three, the 50-headed dog Cerebus, which later became three, um, the 50 right, in the boat that later became the three goddesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'll meaning – meaning the 50 um, stargates and mm -hmm. channels within um, – or Tunnels within the um the mine, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Which were the tunnels set at one point. Mm -hmm. yep. So, so I mean, um, so so all of that to say, we gotta understand these these, these things do come from. Something. I heard someone said the etymo etymology of words mean nothing. You know what I mean? I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. You talking about just nigger or nigga? You know what I'm saying? That doesn't even make right. any sense. If you want to, you know, first and foremost, spiritually, 
um, these words in the the original. You can even go back to Latin, which or or, or, or uh, what it, what else is Latin, French, and there's Greek. These words still had our energy on them, and these words were based upon an intention. So even if you're saying it and meaning something else, you still got that intention on it. For instance, this was one of the things that came spiritually. The word naga, of course, we know is nigger. But since we've been nigger, 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 nigger in it, that, that same frequency is on it, and that's a kundalini energy which has been heating up the planet. So even while we think we're just, oh, we got to stop saying nigger, it's a mantra that's been heating up the planet. In other words, we got this. And, and, and we know this to be true because all of a sudden you had, you had white people coming out saying, we need to stop saying nigger. You get what I'm saying? Around the time Al Gore dropped that, uh, uh, his, his little uh, 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 documentary about the planet heating up. Do you get what I'm saying? So th- th- with the etymology of words, you can find out. I'm sorry, say it say again, bro. Oh, I was just saying unconventional truth. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, right, right, inconvenient truth. When he dropped right. inconvenient right. truth, now, mm-hmm. even for me, I've heard, uh, 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 you know, this is heating up. You know, Texas had to close down the garage today. Sporadically, when he documented that shit all under one umbrella, even me myself, I said, "Now I see how we went in. Now I see it clear as day." But he had to say all of that shit in one uh, in, in 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 one sitting. You get what I'm saying? Right. I said, "Oh, now I'm getting." But then I just remember fifth grade. They told you heat was energy. Right. <laughs> so the planet is heating up, global warming. That means it's gaining energy. So I mean, we know what that is. Not to mention, like I said, if you, you want to take my spiritual thing, um, there was a point where I, um, I got to a certain level where people from other planets would call on me the same way we call on spirits, would call on me, I would go to their planet. One time, right. one of them, somebody called on me, and I, this has never happened to me before. So I'm in, in the lucid dream, I'm trying to talk to them, but they couldn't hear me. And I realized in the dream that, that, they called on my spirit because as I'm right. not know if I heard them calling panic and I seen them doing like rituals and everything. So I'm on that planet and it, it, it was another version of us. They was calling the white man something different, but I remember telling them, no, 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 no. Y'all about to have a greenhouse effect. That's it. Y'all in the last stage. I'm telling them. And I, then I remember I had to constantly yell it to them. And then I started seeing them starting to hear me as like epiphanies the same type of epiphanies that we have here with spirits. Like, oh, yeah, I think, you know, okay, okay, I know that. Then, then, then we start getting the so-called coincidences. Oh, yeah, I was just saying that, and now that happened. Oh, that's a color, and you just came in with that color. That, they was getting me just like that, but all I just was yelling and repeating, no, the, look for the greenhouse effect, look for the green. So when I got up, that's when I knew. I said, okay, this is it, this is it. The greenhouse effect is that stage. You can call it uh, uh, Ice Age, 2012, whatever you want, but whatever it is, this is that time now. This is that time. This is the time where all this shit comes to a motherfucking head, which I don't think I really need to, you know, everyone should know that, you know, by now. Now, check this out. The word lizard and the word wizard transfers, uh, translates in Latin as ofer, ofer. Which is uh, which they associate the snake and the serpent with ofer, as you get in philosopher ofer stone. So you got again in the philosopher stone ofer the wizard or the lizard. Remember the wizard has that pointy hat, which is nothing but a you know pyramid or a cauldron, and it the ofer is nothing but the philosopher stone. Now, um, which is is connected to kundalini once again. And you also get the name Sophia. And it's the fem- uh, and it's the female name for the word wisdom. And the name itself represents the personification of wisdom. Ofer, Sofer, uh, uh Ofer, wizard, lizard, philosopher. All the same shit, all talking about kundalini or all talking about uh the wise one. You give them saying the wise one. The word Sufi. Sufi is 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 connected in that sofa too. Now, um, but the, they have the origin of the word uh, commonly as the word uh, safa means purity and wool. 
referring to the uh, right. now they say it was, it was referring to the cloaks of the Muslim, uh, the, that the aesthetic Muslim. But you know they're talking about the goddamn hair of the black Moor. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's the that's black true. man, the woolly headed one they call them. But the word right. also means um, the Arabic right. word safa means mm-hmm. purity or pur- or mm-hmm. th- so they so they uh, this guy Suf, uh, Sufi Al Rid Habari he said the Sufi is the one who wears wool on top of purity, meaning your afro on top of your pure head. You get what I'm saying? That's Which is another reference to this this cauldron, the wisdom needs to be in the head. The, it's not right. too much what we don't know, but we, we just we just keeping it going along this subject. All this wisdom That's resides in the head. This is where the grail is. When you search for the Holy Grail, it represents you going through the chakras to find it in the head. And then I'm now, getting now, to now, some now, other shit. Now, is that a form of the Baphomet in which that is used today? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which, uh, See, the Baphomet. So scary mm-hmm. to most people, especially those who study the Illuminati information, and they get so inundated with that, and they lose um, track on what these symbols actually mean. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. All the time. Um, I love something Bobby said, but at the end of the day, more, if you look with your own face in your own eyes, you see a thousand, uh, uh, to be more, you see at least ten symbols of enlightenment with that one symbol, and that's all a symbol ever was. I try to tell people, what are you really mad at? Because you, you, you're only looking at a goat. So, like, w- what's really got you in an uproar? So, if we, but I know what's in an uproar because it symbolizes something. To be mad at it means you don't understand the symbol. You get what I'm saying? At the very least, Bobby Hammett done done debunked Satan a, a gazillion years ago. And this is something I say. How come when the uh, any occasion comes up for a conscious nigga in Jesus, a conscious nigga is the first nigga to say there ain't no Jesus, then what makes you think there is a Satan? You get what I'm saying? There is no Satan. You're just talking about opposite polarities. And one of the things I always mention in the Bible, out of darkness comes light, the true path to any of this light you want to see, you need to see your subconscious mind. Now, here's where, what Bobby came said that came in that made it so perfect. He said, I'm sick of seeing pictures like he ain't heavy as my brother, you know, a black man holding another black man's hand, the woman with a earth in her belly, you know. He said, those pictures are nice, but they're not challenging. These pictures that you see are so-called scary are challenging, and they're really challenging your own subconscious mind. Now, one of the things that I discovered was fear. I said, well, what is fear for besides it going haywire? And I never knew this until I spoke it. And I was like, well, when I uh, meditate sometimes, and uh, one of the best techniques is taking your two eyeballs while your eyes are closed, pointing it towards your pineal. You create a pyramid, and then you shut down the regular human world, and you start to open up the pineal. That's that open eye you see on the one dollar bill, which is another symbol people think is the Illuminati. Which is, it's a pyramid with an eye on it. Enough already. You know what I mean? It this happens and you'll start to see light figures in your pineal. And they will slowly turn the faces. Sometimes I see cities, pyramids, but they're all with light. But these first faces are actually scary faces. I didn't realize people start saying, Yeah, I see those too and they said they'll stop. I said, no, what I discovered is you're supposed to focus on those scary places. That's when you're making progress. That's when you are confronting your fears. You are confronting your demons. You're going to a place spiritually that you were kept out of by your own self and your own fear, nothing to fear but fear itself. So when you're looking at these scary faces, I see monsters, skulls, uh, 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 teeth, and all sorts of shit, eventually they'll start turning to angels and, and, and flowers and thousand petal lotuses, all that sweet shit you see. But ultimately, by me sticking with, most people said, no, I would see that and I would stop, I would open my eyes. I said, oh, you're not facing your fear. So when you see things like Baphomet, there's another guy. I, matter of fact, I have his book, so I'm going to get his name. He's an artist, and he's done the, the work for uh, um, Alien. He, he created Alien, and he's done another one. I don't think it was The Matrix, but he does that same artwork. His name is H.R. Greiger, and if you look him up, he's done a lot of movie work. Um, H.R. Greiger, H period, R period, G-I-G-E-R-S. 
and he did a Necronomicon book. This book is out of print. It's an art book, and I got it. It's one of the big-ass books where it's just insane artwork. That shit from, oh, he did Species. That, 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 remember that three-part series, the Alien Girl oh, Species? Yeah. He's, mm-hmm. he's done, he designed all of that. So he has one of those six months. He's, he's, he's done a few Baphomex. And um, what you're talking about is an artist who's dealing totally with his subconscious mind. He used to see these things. You get what I'm saying? So the subconscious mind comes with otherworldly or uh, or or, or uh, 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 things that would look grotesque in this world, and that's because you're supposed to be dealing with this because you're dealing with something else. You're actually busting through your own fear of what these things are. And this fear is generated by you having an ego. I used to say when I was little, I remember everything. My mind now, I remember having when I was a baby. I remember drinking a bottle. I remember my aunt sticking me with a pin, changing my diaper. But I remember my my real thoughts as panic slipping deeper in as I stubbed my toe, burned my hand on the stove, didn't get what I want with dinner. In other words, my humanity started taking over based upon disappointment, based upon me being scared of falling down the steps and hurting my knee of pain. You start to shrink within yourself, and you just become a baby and dumb like everybody else. Coming conscious, I started to remember those thoughts, meaning I was the same guy before that fell deeper in humanity, which would be natural, but was able to get out of it. Now, this subconscious mind thing, so as you fall into this humanity, you start to set up blocks for your subconscious mind. A baby is total subconscious mind, total whim, feed me shit and sleep. And then when it's able to do things, it does what it wants. It would run in the street. It would touch the stove. It would walk off a fucking building. It has nothing to block it. Your conscious mind or your ego is what blocks you from walking out in the street just doing some generally dumb shit. You get what I'm saying? Eating a hot prank off the stove or whatever. It, 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 it generally blocks you from that. So that comes with fear. The ego is nothing but fear. So you, your work is to bust back through that fear. And you bust back through that fear through through actually confronting, nothing to fear but fear itself or that statement of facing your own demons. So most of these white boys, they do it on a surface level based upon their rock music. So all that Ozzy and throwing up the fingers and drawing all that crazy stuff is in their mind. They So since it's in their subconscious mind, but they don't even understand what it was, what it's for, that's why you have a culture of goth and rock music and more of that stuff. And then black people who are conscious look at it because they associate it with white people, say, oh, that's just the white man shit. You get what I'm saying? But what you have is a white man playing out his subconscious mind or the archetype of our subconscious mind. He's playing it out because it has nothing to do with his transformation. So since it's in him, that's how he's expressing himself. But these things are for our transformation. So these, these dark figures, these Baphomets, these so-called demons, which is Damien, which means genius, that's in us as well. We're suppressing and thinking we're some people of light and good that pick fruit off the trees. We are those things. But to get down to some work, you're going to have to deal with the dark portion of yourself, which is represented as Satan, just the other polarity of your Christ energy. You need to go through the dark to get to the light. We don't understand that. We think we the light beings, and these white people are the dark beings. That's ridiculous. Because again, because they don't have no way to do any alchemy. What you see is them expressing it in that that crazy art, that crazy music they're doing, jumping off the stage and beating themselves in the head with bottles because it's in them, but it's no way to for them to get it out, to understand what that process is. Our process for this is to deal with these, to communicate with our subconscious mind. But since we you know, they can't get over the fact that your fire's Levy has made this image. But I've been told, uh, uh, Bobby broke this down, he made that Im- image in, uh, uh, in, in adoration for the Moors of Baphomet. And then a lot of people would say, and don't even get this, there's an Egyptian deity named Maphomet. And Maphomet has the attributes of Baphomet, even though they say it's not the same thing. So people ask me, some people who try to go further say, well, is Baphomet Muhammad? I said, no, Baphomet may be Muhammad if you want to have a edition and, and, and people could do the work. I've never did look hard enough to see. But Baphomet was is just a symbol of the goat head created by Phyus Levy 
in representation or adoration of the Moors, and it's just a symbol, symbolic picture. It cannot do nothing to you, but it represents that wisdom. They, what can do something to you is the fact that he put it in a five-point pentagram, which is an archetypal shape. So basically by having that five-point pentagram, if you understand about that pentagram and it being upside down, when you turn it upside down, it rep- the house that's in the middle he comes right side up. You are then pulling energy from the cosmos into you. So I have a Baphomet ring. I wear it backwards with the point pointing towards me, meaning I'm pulling off the energy. They said even white folks do rituals with that where if they're trying to give some energy, they turn the ring where the point is pointing towards the object or the center, or if they're trying to gain energy, they point it towards them because they understand that the five-point star is man, two legs, two arms, and a head. But you're pointing it up which means, you know, people like to point that pentagram up, which means you're giving your energy up to the cosmos yep. and your house is upside down. So by pulling it down, it's, it's a symbolic thing. It's really not a big thing. And if everyone who's right. conscious is so big, bad, and mighty, you this is you just looking at a goat. You know what I'm saying? People are saying things like, uh, I've seen people say things like, uh, uh, that symbol's never done anything for me. I'm like, you too ignorant to really know how sad that statement is for you. It's a kundalini energy. It's a kundalini picture. It's an androgynous picture. You get what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's a, a picture talking about polarity, duality, one hand up towards the dark, one down towards the light. You get what I'm saying? It, it, but and it's not really that deep. You get what I'm saying? In fact, I use it more because it's represented as the god Pan, and my name is Panic. So on a personal level, it's an energy for me. But I wouldn't stop there. I fuck with everybody, everything. But that's it, it. Balances a certain energy in me. Otherwise, it would just be another thing. You know what I'm saying? Which is which is which is not that bad. There's more of these so-called lovely pictures. I think is more ridiculous because it keeps you in your prison called humanity. And now again, it'll be another uh, uh, topic. But I mean in. In the not in, most of the Gnostic information is where the, these later day Egyptians just straight up told you, look, we ain't got no time for you walking around with Amenhotep and Rahotep. We want to tell you straight out, this is what we were talking about in the end result. And 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 the end result is, look, you fucked up coming down here. You need to get out and never come back. And then when you read and study not just how beautiful the Egyptian people were, but what they were actually saying, you'll realize all they were talking about was getting the fuck out and never coming the fuck back either. So the, in, in all mythologies, once you get to that decoding level of the game, it's like, no, they're talking about never coming back. So a lot of these pro-human things, which is the cause of our suffering, I look at that. That's more offensive than anything, That you know, technically. And in my book, which uh, I haven't talked about, there's a deity called Shub Niggerov, which is a Necronomicon deity um, Necronomicon, channeled right. by mm-hmm. right by H.P. Lovecraft. Shub Niggerov right. is basically constantly giving out, constantly giving out the energy. Mm-hmm. But this is one of the things in my book, so I won't go too deep till it's done, um, that Baphomet is – Shub, Shub Nigarov represents the chaos. She's also right. a he, goat, and all the rest. He represents the chaos form of this. Baphomet represents that chaos form enlightened, meaning he is no longer giving out energy with that kundalini force. He is now pulling in energy. So it represents right. a transformation thing. So in, in, a, in any ritual where you have to give something out or, or, or change something, you would use Shub Nigarov. Anything where you're trying to get under control, you would use Baphomet. So on and so forth. So, so, so I, in, in, when I was in that mood of writing, I went deeper in the zone. But all these things are symbolic purposes. Your subconscious mind right. deals with symbols. The end. Right. You're not let's, having let's, a straight out conversation. Right. Right. Let's, okay. let's deal with that because, because a lot of people aren't understanding. When we talk about Baphomet and Shut Nigga Off, we talk about melanin. Right, right. You know what I'm right. You know, right. You know, right. Which is viewed as a battery. That is partially charged and that right. accept an electrical charge. So when sunlight right. or any other energy comes in contact with that melanin battery, it increases the charge of the battery to a certain degree. Now that's what right. you have your three dantians for. Your lower dantian, which is your navel, your heart dantian, which is your heart chakra, and your third eye or you know, um dantian, which is called your upper um chakra or also referred mm-hmm. to as the upper room. Now when mm-hmm. the energy 
it, you use those to capture the energy, and the battery has more energy to use in the body. Now, this means that, the, you know, the human being can charge their melanin, you know, with this unique ability of absorbing various energy sources and convert those absorbed energies into reusable energy later. That's the science of, of the Qigong and the Tai Chi, you know. And so right. this includes, you know, the music vibrations, or as Bobby always speaks about the muse, or the sound waves, or the um, sun rays, the sun heat, like you just finished talking right. about, you know, um, the light rays and et cetera. Matter of fact, there's a, um, in Dr. Frank's Bar's theory, he says matter is shaped and structured by light. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Now, you can mm. think this is not light, like just visible light, like we always think. This is prana, a chi, a key energy, which is, right. in, which is not visible, as we would say. It, this is right. Amen Ra. This is the hidden substance. Right, the hidden God. The, right, the, the hidden, hidden God. Light. Right. You know what I'm saying? And these, um, um, these molecular or melanin um, combinations eat light in order to maintain and expand and evolve matter. Right. So the more highly right. evolved a species, the more complex is biological capacity to use this light. And I'm so glad you said that because we could even get, we could, so, we could get right to the point when if thoughts are light and these simple concepts like Baphomet, your thoughts think of them as corrupt. You sabotaging yourself if thoughts are light. Now, if you, if the guys, if you see, as Brother Lean just said, this is food. These, these particular, see, the Baphomet is a symbol or just a name of a certain battery type. Just like this double A, triple A, a car battery, D battery, C batteries. The Egyptians were fucking insane with naming every single form of light or every single form of energy. There is nothing that breaks shit down. They, they, they found the God light in fucking everything. The door, Shem Shabu, and the bookcase, Nahu, and all. They found the God name in everything. So they gave definitions. Now, 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 now that's colors. something else that you just said, because we, we don't understand that the light that he's talking about is the spirit. The spirit in right. everything, the Africans, Native the Americans, and all the indigenous people, the aborigines, they all believe that there's um, um, spirit in everything. I mean, I mean, right. hell, I mean, right. the Japanese right. scientists right. Just, right. just just rediscovered that there's a spirit in water. That that water is, right. is a container for memory. <laughs> you know right. What I'm saying? Wow. So right. So so we know that the ancients was right on point. We got to catch up to them, and the way to catch right. up is through studying this information that we're talking about tonight. Now, exactly. uh, the, before the practice, we go, we, med- got, we, got, some, we, got, okay. some, we got a question here, and I want you to get to Let me see if the person is on here. Um, 864, you're on the air. You got some questions for Brother Penny? Hi, sure. Um, first of all, I wanted the, um, that email address, um, that pineal, pineal package. Oh. Not, yeah. Could you get that okay. email address again? Okay, just e- give me an email. It's panicpack at hotmail dot com, spelled P A N I C P A C K at hotmail. And I also have other spiritual things. If you're in the Atlanta area, like I said, my first my first lecturer, my first teacher coming in is going to be Brother Aline. Don't want to miss that. So you can get on that email list for future information and lists of other. Sh- I have lists of other shows I've done on many different topics. I also give you that for free. So email me anybody p a n i c p a c k at hotmail dot com. All right. All right. Um, um, I know you sent me um, that in the package, right? Yeah, that's what you got in the package. I I also sent you uh, these Ganesha crystals, uh, and I was going to tell you anyway, but you know, all you need is an oil burner, no oil, just a little bit of water. You can put oil, and it'll it'll fill the room with menthol. You want to just do your some breath, whatever breath techniques you do, with that in the room, and watch what happens. Oh yeah, no, you know, it'll open up anything. That. You'll you'll love that. And I don't know if you knew about the herb pack, but again, it's all natural herbs. There are no drugs. You will not get uh, pee tested. Uh, it's it's nothing that all is it's no psychotropic drugs and it, none of that. All natural. Anything you can put on your food. These are all things that go to the pineal. And it works with you as you do whatever it is you do for your pineal. Everyone, I've dished this out, and I've been. This is this is old news. This is nothing new. This is old, and it's cheap as well. 
this is oh I've been selling this for two years and there's not one complaint and I've and I, I send out forty packages of this shit every week for the last two years. Believe that's why my book is taking so long. So I mean this is a certified this this is a certified guarantee product and so on and so forth. And you will notice, especially anybody on their path, day and night, you will notice you will notice a big thing. Great for lucid dreams, astral traveling, and these epiphanies. Most people say they have a lot of chatter when they meditate. Some of the most feedback is it shuts down that chatter when they meditate. And what it does do is starts to break uh open the pineal so not so you don't just have an experience when you smoke it. It starts to bring the energy back to that area to decalcify it, and what happens? You you become a start to become adept in what it is you're doing. Period. The end. It doesn't go. It, does, it doesn't go away unless you do so. You know, unless you stop doing this work, and then it'll atrophy again. Okay. So you definitely need um, email for that. You see the other question? You know, we we got another question here. Area code two five three. You on the air? What's good, Aline? Peace, peace. Peace, peace. This is your boy, DJ Imhotep. Man, you know what? Right. I, we were we was we was coming back from the we was coming back from a Seahawk game, it was like a couple months ago, and we was listening to your show, right? And you was you was kicking in about, you know, saying about air. You still there? Yes, we did. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I just heard this little beep. All right, um, so you was kicking in about air, you know, saying, and, you know, I go real deep in it about air, but, you know, saying I, just just to stay on, you know, saying your your point of it, you know, you were talking about air being spirituality, and then we was like, damn, these dudes was sitting there running around with a pig ball filled with the holy breath. And, you know what I'm saying, I thought, let me, I, one day I'm going to call him and ask him, what does he think about that? I know the show didn't have anything to do with it. I just happened to just, you know, get your number and said, okay, I'm going to call tonight and see what's good with him. But, but um, you know, I, I just kind of wondered, you know, what, wanted to know, what did you think about the idea of putting the holy breath inside a pig ball? And, you know what I'm saying, and I know, you know, I know the pig it, it, it's set in a sense, you know, saying it's set in a sense, you know, saying so you could look at it in a, in a variety of different ways. And, you know, pork is pork is unforbidden, but at the same time, pork is a medicine. But, you know, saying I just wonder, you know, what did you think about, you know, putting the holy breath in this dead flesh? Well, I mean, I, I, I would add, I don't want to cut anybody off, but I, I think it's more disturbing motherfuckers eating a holy pig in the stands and calling them hot dogs. You know no, I mean? no, I feel you on that. I totally feel you on that. So but did I stop you? Yeah, not everything is air, water, earth, and fire, so they got to do something, you know. No, no, I hear, you, I hear you. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we was going in that day. We was like, you know, they, they, there was oh. a brother, there was a wide receiver, and his last name was Muhammad. I was thinking, like, is he supposed to be touching this ball? Is, right. Do they, call, do the they pig, really the eat pig chapter, skin? Yeah, I, I he's think not they're supposed to be touching the ball as uh, as a uh, Hebrew or Israelite slash even later on as um, a Muslim according to the Quran. Of course, we're not supposed to be touching, you know, the um, the pig. However, you know, uh, when we was talking about spirit, we talking about the breath. Then when you break down the word spirit, even if you read within Webster Dictionary, the word spirit. Synonym is breath, and if you look up breath, it's synonym is spirit. So spirit and breath is one and the same. So when a person speak about um, you being spiritual, you know what you what they're really talking about or asking you is that, or well, how much do you breathe, you know, or how yeah. deep do you breathe, you know. I mean that's right. really what they're right. asking you, you know, because it's your breath which is the mediator between the lower self and the higher self. You know, right. um, as far as it being in a pig, I mean, it's there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, a pig is nothing more derivative of a boar. You know what I'm saying? So it's amazing right, right. that we'll talk about the albino pig, you know what I'm saying, um, in which that is, um, you know, a drafted animal, you know what I'm saying, from a boar, you know, in which that, that's what Elijah Muhammad, you know, and that was actually referring to, um, was being made of a rat, cat, and dog. But, I mean, um, many of us have rat, you know, have um have um uh rat tail. You live in New York shit, you don't see them plenty of um all over the damn place. Right. Um, you know, they got cats, they got dogs, I mean, even living inside the home. 
So, I mean, this creature is supposed to be a drafted byproduct of those three particular animals, you know what I'm saying, through what is called genetic fusion or fission. Now, as far as, you know, disrespecting it just because it symbolizes something, you know what I'm saying, it symbolizes set. Okay, well, set is supposed to be symbolic to the lower self. Well, so that's the reason why um, we don't touch it. You know, however, according to um, certain historical accounts, the ancient Egyptians um, celebrated set at least twice out the year, and they actually ate pork or um, the pig at least twice out of the um, year as a symbolic representation of set, you know what I'm saying? And from that set priesthood in which that um, um, Brother Panic was talking about earlier, now, of course, you know, that's revolting to the vegetarians, the vegans, the fruitarians, the vegetarians, as well as, um, you know, even to those who are conscious about their diet who no longer eat um, pork, you know, such as a Muslim or Jew or even some Christians. You know, however, we have to understand that we talk about symbolism here and what it's symbolic to, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, what it is is that we, get, we take symbology, and as even Brother Panda was talking about, and we try to make it literal. You know what I'm saying? In the sense of sometimes we go too far with, with, with it being little. And what I mean by little, I'm talking about historical, in a sense. We take symbolism to make it historical, such as uh, we were talking about earlier with the um, symbol of Baphomet. And now we take it in order to make it historical, you know what I'm saying? Um, right. As far as, you know, as far as it being applied to maybe like Jay-Z or Kanye West right. or others, you know, who... Um, are now allegedly part of the Illuminati and so and so and so right. and so on and going through sacrifices and rituals and all these types of things. I mean, these things are questionable. You know, however, you do have brothers like um, Brother Black Dot, um, Professor Griff, and others who teach on that type of um, information, Kitty Owadu and others who actually teach on um, the infiltration of hip-hop, you know, as well as, you know, um, other means of communication, you know, from those who put forth and postulate that type of information. You know what I'm saying? But when you look at the symbolism behind it, you know, there's no fear when you look at it. You understand that this is all just, um, you know, information in which that is detailing some type of energy or some type of conscious state, you know what I'm saying? And when you look at it like that, the fear goes away. You know, you don't. No, I, 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 I hear you. See, you know, I've been in, I've been dealing with this craft since I was about eleven. I had a mom mm-hmm. that spent a long time in Egypt. You know, so in fact, she passed away in Egypt in '99. So, you know, saying that I, uh, I was, I was one of those kids where, you know, your mom's running around calling you Horace because, you know, saying because she's seeing it, and you know, and she had me when she was sixteen, so she, she was seeing it then. So I grew up with a mom talking exactly how panic talks. And now that, you know, now that he's come out and, and, you know, saying, and, and absolutely just basically, uh, I would say, uh, been a superstar in, in this world, you know what I'm saying? He, he he's going to go down as a master, super master teacher. His, his job is, 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 I don't even think panic will ever know what he's really done. You know what I'm saying? Because he's made it, he's made it all right. He's made it where it's all right. I remember when I was a kid in high school, People used to just get on us like we was the devil, and you know, what I'm saying, and it just, you know, saying totally, you know, just be totally against us, you know, saying for trying to, you know, understand and study knowledge. But Panic has done something where he's made it all right, you know, what I'm saying, because he, I, I don't know anybody who don't love Panic, and so, that, you know, that's just showing me like, okay, I better get back into my study. And I was here, I was, I was on this in 1985, you know, what I'm saying I'm 42, you know, what I'm saying, so, you know, what I'm saying, and, and, and I remember I, I kind of let it go. And then I started listening to a couple of brothers. I was like, man, it, it, the brothers, I'm, I'm, I'm out here on the West Coast, as a matter of fact, though, but the brothers on the East Coast is, is serious, you know, saying you guys got a whole community, but I'm loving it. And, you know, the beautiful thing about it is your guys' showsmanship along with your your knowledge is, is like it's better than TV. It's better. I'm missing the basketball game right now. I'm missing the Celtics right now. You know what I'm saying? But you guys, it's is, 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 is beautiful. You know what I'm saying? I wish I, could, I wish I could have you guys on the big screen, you know what I'm saying, so I could get the visual and everything. But, but um, I guess let me, let me drop one little, one little wisdom on you guys on that, on that penile gland because there's, a, there's some products out there, not to, not to, not to you know, 
push aside the panic pack because I, I I would like to try the panic pack. You know, saying I'm always trying to try new things, but it's called the Procyon, and it's you know it's got the binary beats with the glasses that you know actually throw the actual binary beats into your eyes. And man, let me tell you. Brother, you will not know in your life if you're dreaming or not. Sometimes you will be wide awake and be feeling like this is a dream, and I got to kind of shake this. And you can feel what's going to kind of happen, but you know you you kind of still wait because you it, it's such a weird reality to kind of be outside of yourself all day long. It, it's called the Procyon, Procyon AVS, you know, saying audio um, visual synthesizer. Let me tell you, this thing will set you off, especially if you're um, you're already meditating. This thing will take you to another limit. And you know what I do though, I I I use crutches and everything to you know get into the pineal gland. But at the same time, you gotta you gotta push them away and take time to do it without. Because if you find yourself where you don't have you know, saying a panic pack or some type of visual aid or, you know, saying you, you're going to have to find it within. Uh, l- last well, thing. Let, 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 uh, before you do the last thing, I've given out plenty of detail on how to deal with the pioneer without a panic pack. One of the things you could do, one of the easiest things you could do uh, without spending a whole bunch of money is get one of those uh, those things you put over your eyes when you go to sleep, those masks, get a good one, and just put a magnet in there. You'll you'll see. Okay, uh, okay, that's what's up. See, I, you know, whole, I've dealt with I mean, that before too. Did, 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 I got I got a a thousand things uh, you can do for your pineal. A thousand meditations. Aline's giving out a thousand. There's a thousand things I've stole to use from Aline for for getting into your pineal. This everyone know is all about the pineal, and there's always something new. And 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 I just want to say to you, I appreciate those acclimates, but those acclimates have to go to Bobby Hemmett. He was the one that introduced occult information for many years and demystified it and took a lot of fear out of the heart. So when I was able to study, I was able to start from a good place of not having to get over a lot of things based upon his work. So those type of acclimates, he was the one that made, I think maybe I connect with a more hip-hop thing if 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 I was going to say anything, and you know I do talk about different subjects, subjects I dealt with, but Bobby was the one who's going to he really demystified it for a lot of people, and you know I don't want to you know I want to you know make always make sure that he gets you know I there's no way I could even attempt to step into that credit you know what I mean, so no, just want to make that clear for the record that's that's Bobby's role he did that you know what I mean so and I'm sorry you have one more thing you want to say. Oh, um, we have another question. It's 336. Oh, okay. And we call 336. You're on the line. Hey, what's going on, Brother Lim? Brother Panic. All right. Well, I just got a question, hey, man. Uh, most of the time when I um I go and I start meditating, probably like after five or ten minutes, it's like this black image appears, and it's like it's trying to, like, communicate with me. But it's like it seems like it's so real. I start cracking open my eyes and I mess up and I try to get back. That's the key. That's what we were talking and, about earlier. Remember, that's the image you need to stay with. So that's what all the techniques for being able to stay in that zone. I wish we had more time. There's meditations to do it. One of the easiest meditations. I know I'm going quick because we got a little bit of time. But one of the easiest meditations is to focus upon something simple. I would say like an apple. This is something my father taught me when I was like six in meditation. And you want to experience it with all five senses. So you take an apple, you want to feel how it touch, smell, taste, feel, rolling on your face and your mind. Do everything you could possibly do with this one simple object. What you're starting to do is create focused focus in the pineal. You're starting to be able to focus on an image. You get it? Because that's okay. exactly what you're trying to do. And then you want to okay. take it to a banana. Then you want to take it to something more co- complex, uh, maybe not a pigskin, but, you know, something more complex, a light then eventually you want to get to where you're in your bedroom, but, you're in, but you want to take your mind to your bathroom and you want to be exact detail. You want to look at all the details, focus on one spot in your bathroom. Basically what you're doing with simple objects is focusing on the one spot. And then eventually okay. to a car, a moving vehicle, what you're doing is building up stamina. The pineal gland has atrophy, meaning it's been in a coma. So anyone who just wakes up out of a coma cannot get up and walk. You're going to have to start with wiggling your toes, twisting your feet, then eventually walking on some crutches. So that's what you're doing with the pineal gland. 
And okay. the, like I said, the simple way to do that, do go through that technique as much as you can or much as you feel you need to. Then when you build this stamina up to focus on one thing, when you're dealing with something that's coming to you spiritually, you'll be able to focus on that one thing without being distracted and be in a lucid state to see exactly what it's talking about. So there's techniques for that. The shortcut, once again, herb pack. That's what this herb pack has been doing. But without an herb pack, this also can be done for scot-free, and that's one of the easiest techniques to do it. And I'm sure Lean has plenty of techniques on how to med- how to have some successful meditation. But the idea is you're trying to Phil Valentine would always say, Brother Phil would say, you need to focus your pineal like a laser beam. Well, that's one of the techniques that, that does it, but you have to start small, something that you know. You get what I'm saying? Even if it's not an apple, get a walnut. And all five senses is what you're doing because what you're trying to do is get your five senses is how you interpret this reality, so you want to get everything how you interpret in this reality into that reality. All right? Okay. All right. All right. You got another, you, bro. We got another um caller here. Is eight six zero. Caller eight six zero. You on the line? How you guys doing? All, All right, right, bro. Doing well. Huh? Um, I, yes, was, I was meditating. I was meditating like a couple months ago, and um, I saw like an image of an owl. Uh, and mm-hmm. I wasn't sure. I was like, am I, am I seeing an image of an owl? And then. And then all of a sudden I see I see like the image of almost like the owl like the the Bohemian Grove you know what I'm saying it's like it was like mm-hmm. a shadow in, in my mind and um, and then maybe like 30 seconds later um, an owl starts hooting in like in my back porch like a real mm-hmm. uh, actual owl I was right. wondering do you guys know what that that symbolic of or Owl means uh, the wise owl is pineal gland or it's um, or wisdom. So uh, I can't remember. You could do this because I can't remember, and there is. You could just look up deity and owl, see what deities, because it was that spirit. There's also, which which I would hate, to, but I would still bring it up. There's a secret society. I can't remember their name. Their, their thing is an owl, and um, they also uh, do rituals at that Bohemian Grove. But you might have been traveling today or seen something there, but the wise owl is wisdom. It's, it's, it's still connected to the pineal. You were definitely astral traveling, and that owl has a message. I can't remember the deities. Like I said, you know, I always say, and I'll say it here, it's hard for me to remember a lot because I've never done this to lecture, so I don't remember it so I can spout it off. I'll study it and move on. But there is a deity connected, um, you know, the owl always represents the, the, the companion of the wizard, Merlin, you know, the rest of the, in Greek mythology, you'll find the representation of the owl. It was also in, um, it was in the movie, uh, uh, they just, uh, uh, um, per, the Perseus movie. The owl of, of, oh, right, of Gaul. Gaul, right, the owl of Gaul. Um, no, oh, no, the, um. No, uh, in the mythology, what's that movie? Uh, uh, that that old Greek movie, that old Greek mythology. It was just one just now. See, I'll forget all this shit. Uh, not the Titans one. Um, uh, the, the the one when he was fighting Medusa, but the first one, they had the owl. But it, um, the, the, in Greek mythology, a long story short, because we out of time. Look up deity and owl, and just just find out what deity goes with what owl. There's also a book, Bobby Hemmings has been saying it for years, Dictionary of Ancient Deities, where you can, when you see these symbols, um, or there's actually a symbol book by Barbara, uh, Barbara J. Walker. Uh, 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 it's a similar, I don't know where it's at. Um, but Barbara J. Walker, okay, The Woman's Dictionary of Symbols and Sacred Objects. Um, if we had more time, I'd look it up for you, but it's by Barbara G. Walker, Get that, so when you, not just the owl, when you see things like an owl, you can have a book to, to go back and say, well, what does an owl mean? What does a cat mean? What does a rat mean? And then you'll get that definition and come up with your own thing because that's one of the things I'm big on, giving people the stuff to have their own because what an owl means to me may mean different to you. You get what I'm saying as well. For instance, well, I, I usually give the analogy with a baseball bat. If you dream about a baseball bat, um, and your father took you to baseball games when you was little, and that's your fondest memories, that baseball bat symbolizes fond memories. But if my father used to beat my ass with a baseball bat 
and I dream about it, that means something different for me. But an owl has an archetype type energy. You just need a book to be able to look in these archetype energies. The Women's Dictionary of Symbols and Sacred Objects is a good one. Um, this is another good one you can get. The Dictionary of Symbol Symbolism by Hans. His last name is spelled B-I-E-D-E-R-M-A-N-N. -N. And then you can kind of get it, to, you know, you can kind of get the idea yourself of what it is. You can Google what does an owl mean, a cult right. owl, deity owl, and see what it means for yourself. The idea is for you to be self-dependent, you know what I'm saying? And that's where you have right. your own in, in, the, in the movie in which that Brother Penny is talking about is Jason and the Argonaut. You're right. Jason and the Argonaut. Um, the other one, too, uh, the, they just made the remix with Medusa. The, the fa And I can't believe it escapes me. Um, with Perseus. And, um, oh, yeah, Perse and, right. That, well, that was the name of it. Clash of the Titans. Um, Clash of the, the Titans. Olympians and Perseus or something. Like that. Right, Clash of the Titans. Clash of the Titans. Clash but the earlier the one, remember, they had the metal uh, owl in there. And, you know, mm -hmm. the owl always, the wise owl represents the pineal, wisdom, and, it, and and so those are symbolic, but it's pro if the owl physically came, then that's a deity. Yeah, a real through. owl. A real you know okay. came. Right. Yeah, that's a well, deity that came also around you. It was also a symbol of Tahuti, which, of course, symbolizes Tahuti. wisdom. Right. right. So Tahuti all, of that, symbolizes, all right. of that correlates to um, everything which that um, is talking about. So um, in that case, right. brother, the owl also turns its head in 360 degrees direction, so it's symbolic. Right, right. which means the all seeing eye. Right, the all seeing eye. That's yeah. That's how they related to the pioneer, the all seeing eye, and the, right, exactly. Um, but there is a deity. When I was studying, there is a deity. There is a deity uh, that is connected to the owl, though. I can't remember who it is. And um, let me see. If she has a uh, thing in this book, uh, and she does. But you probably could just, like I said, you could just Google some of that um, and find out. Okay, L, I'm trying to look this up. You can also go to the website, um, um, Shamanistic Animals, in which that tells you about uh, what each animal means as far as in um, uh -huh. human form. You know, and so that's uh -huh. a good site. So www.shamanisticanimals.com or shamanisticspirits.com. And um, you can uh -huh. get on there and um, check out the symbol, the symbology of the animals also. Right, right, yeah, that, that that's tight, yeah. See, and I would look at that because that was that seemed. I would even look at that first because that seemed like more of a shamanistic experience he had, because especially when he was taken to that location, you know what right. I mean. So that seems that seems like more of a shamanistic experience that he actually had. You know what I mean. And, yeah, actually, I'm looking in this book, and they do, uh, let me see, they have uh, the, it's actually, they connected to to uh, the owl to Horus as well. Um, former Egyptian Horus, man, the father, I'm trying to look, yeah, eagles, doves, and they got this owl thing going with him. So yeah, they do. So they connected to him too as well. And I know as you, it is connected to uh, to Hootie as the wisdom because to Hootie, Merlin is based upon to Hootie, right? And and Merlin is you know Merlin Merlin has the owl, which is nothing but to Hootie, right? So, and yeah. the owl um, within um, the Metunet is spelled M E R, which is Merlin is spelled M E R L I N. So um, the owl is the symbol of the M, you know, within the Metunata. So um, uh -huh. that is also what you see on the um, front of the dollar bill up in the upper left-hand, uh, right-hand corner on the left-hand side of the one, you'll see an owl peeping from behind, which that symbolizes um, the moors or the mirrors or the meru, um, right. um, actual, you know, and that's who they actually worshiping at the Bohemian Grove is you. And the mm -hmm. history in which that they, um, that they stole from you and that they now use against you. Right. <laughs> that is actually what right. Oh, right. right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, right. yeah. And um, you know, um, kind of rituals Odin. Rituals are going to hold us down with our own energy, Odin. our own magic. I just remembered. Odin also has an owl in Norse right. mythology. Athena also, the owl is connected to the goddess Athena as well. 
And so I know it represents that wisdom. It's always that companion. But I'm sure, you know, it, the, the the better thing for him to do is just look and look, you know what I mean? Right. Right. All right. Yeah. Um, we got another uh, call here. Um, 864, 864, you're on the line, 864. 864, you're on the line. <clears throat> Uh, I I think I would ask my ask my question, but um, I like first of all, thank you, gentlemen, for sharing this knowledge. I'm here in South Carolina, and we don't I don't have a lot of conversation like that around here. So, and, and a friend of mine on Facebook uh, connected me to you guys. I am grateful to her, and I am also grateful to you guys for sharing this knowledge. Um, I had a similar dream um, as the brother was talking about earlier about that owl. And there's a big owl sitting right there on my on my uh, pole in front of my house, and he just he kind of enlightened me on a lot of things. I have those dreams too as well, and I, I know now it's the fear that make me wake up because I'm afraid to go into that door or go into that darkness. Or, so right. thank you, gentlemen, um, and I, I I got your email address. Trust me, I will be. I will, you guys will be hearing from me. And I would love to share that knowledge with some of my colleagues, some of my friends and family around here. It's kind of hard because they're really Christian-based people, and I'm not. But anyway, right. thank you. I, I thoroughly, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed the Oh, no, first no, time this too? Oh, God. But this would not be the last time. All right, well, we appreciate you. you know this too, brother. Yeah, this, this, this might help you. Uh, yeah, I was going to say really quick, this might help. The owl also may be your animal spirit to both you guys, so that's also another road or option you should try to look at to see if it's your animal spirit because it might just be taking you there to show you something or it's, it might be coming up in your dreams, brother, to tell you something. So that door of fear that you were talking about, there's nothing in there but fear itself. So you, that's the doors to walk through. That's the path you should be walking. So the animal, also, the owl may also be your animal spirit, which says a lot. Lovely. All right, bro? All right, bro. We have a new caller, um, 704, you're on the air, 704. Hello? Greetings, how you doing? Greetings, how are you? Dr. Bay, All right. Janet. Hey, how um, are I you? Communicated, good. <clears throat> I communicated with both of you guys on Facebook before. The question I have is um, I do my meditation every night and every morning, and what I started noticing over the past two weeks is um, – seeing like a smoke-like substance um, come up as I'm meditating. And I'm thinking it's because I have my eyes closed, but when I open my eyes, I actually see it's like kind of like, not. I guess it's like snake, but it's more like someone has a lit cigarette underneath me. And I was oh, wondering cool. what that was. Well, well, no, Brother brother Leem has talked about this, and but I'll speak and I'm sure he'll be able to clear it. That's mm-hmm. Kundalini Energy. He's talked about in many lectures where there are monks who actually sit in snow and just with their kundalini energy alone melt the snow. Kundalini is a fire energy. So you are actually successful. You are raising that energy. You are seeing. Remember earlier I was talking about your head is a fire castle. Right. right. You get what I'm saying? So you, you're successful. I'm sure Brother Lee want to speak, you know, could speak more on it. I well. mean, I can't say no perfect. Than that, brother Panic. I mean, um, I've been seeing that a lot of my meditations also, and that is what is symbolic to is that the Kundalini has been um, has been risen, right, you know. And right. um, and I can tell you for a fact is that that's what it is because from my own meditations right. is that I'm seeing the same type of smoke or um, mm-hmm. you know wavy you know um, lines. Right. You know, some of the right, right. That book, going that out, um, you get down the highway on a hot summer day is like the line, you know, like the heat coming up, you know, and that is, right. um, that's the kundalini, no doubt about it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. And that's because good. That means time, you're, get, you're making progress, too, especially if you right. seem like, like that. Exactly. I mean, whatever you're, you know, whatever you're focused on, because kundalini mm-hmm. burns a lot of, it, you know, mm-hmm. it, it, it's a, it's a, it's life force energy. So right. things anti life, believe it or not, is a lot of human thought is burning a lot of that up. So that's proof that's that exactly whatever you're studying down. is actually going down. It's happening. Right. That's exactly. actually right. real it's good. Called, it's called ethereal rates. And along the spinal column, um, mm-hmm. along with those um, particular 
31 plus 2 nerves, um, there's also ethereal threads in which that correlates to those nerves in which that when the kundalini energy rises, it burns those, it burns them, those ethereal okay. cords, you know, and it burns it up. And it's nothing more than like what Panic said is latent conscious, subconscious things right. in which that you have laid there based off of your life experiences in this lifetime or in another or in the past lifetime right. in which that right. the kundalini is burning off so that you can um, ascend to the next level of consciousness. And right. that's interesting because that's when I start actually seeing, well, deities will come to me at that point. <clears throat> like mm-hmm. Pakar right. would come, um, Kali would come at that point, and then initiations would take place right after that. So, yeah, that's mm-hmm. big. And, and I don't know if you heard, again, you can always email me for a list of old shows, but I did something on Kali, and she she actually burns up, uh, can't, there's a name for it, but it's basically eight ignorances, eight ignorances in humanity. So um, while, you know, while you see her as this destroyer, she's actually destroying human ignorance. And right. that being said, the, eight path, of the eightfold path for Buddha also. Those right, eight, right, the uh, eight, right, the eight noble truths, right, right, and all that. Right. So, they're, they're, so, so clearly that's what, if Kali came, then, She's uh, she's destroying these levels of human ignorance, not you know an insulting ignorance, but the mm-hmm. ignorance that just comes along with the fact that you were born. You know what I mean? And those are the things you have to work through. That's what I was telling you. I remember being conscious when I was little, but just humanity just makes you dumb. And mm-hmm. then becoming where I, you know picking up where I left off now. So that's what's happening too. You know, you're you're burning up your natural human thing and you know Kali is the one that, that's why you would call her and and that's why and you know I broke down we don't look at her as fierce because we grew up on Freddy Krueger and Jason and now that saw nonsense right. so but her image was you know like if you woke up and seen Kali you might smile if you woke up and seen Freddy Krueger it's mm-hmm. a different story so yeah. back then when they was drawing dealing with this image you got to look at it look at it as that's who they were looking at so why would they do that? Because they know what you're about to do is not a bullshit task. They know if you can, in other words, if you say, fuck that, I'm going to stand in front of Freddy Krueger, Jason, and, and Michael Myers, they know, well, you can't be scared. You have to be serious exactly. if you want to do this. So meaning the fact that colleagues come to you, you are, it, 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 it proves that you are serious because if she's come, she's clearing that out. And, right. and that, that's big. And, that's and really big. Right, and Kali she was the first one that came. Of, yeah. Right, well, Kali right. is a form of your Kundalini, you know, right. and that's the mother goddess spirit. Um, her Egyptian form is Sekhmet, you know, right. and yeah. her right. Hebrew form right. is Shekinah, which is the glorified right. feminine sense of God, you right. know. Right. Um, so, I mean, um, it's the Kundalini, the Kundalini Shakti, you know what I'm saying, energy. Right. You know, that's that's Kali, and that's in her warrior form, just like it is within the um, the ancient Egyptian tales of the Metaneta, or the um, Perhem Heru, in which that speaks about um, Ra sending forth Sekhmet in order to go and destroy the human race. Right. You know, right. and that's the same with the, right. with the signs of Kali. You know, so that's why right. she came to right. you first. Of course, she symbolizes the Mother Goddess principle, which is the Kundalini itself. And right, it I've Kundalini had itself. Um, visions of when... Um, like, for example, I'll give you a good example. Um, the first time my Kundalini came to me, you know what I'm saying, um, we was at the airport, and we were sitting down looking at planes take off, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, and I asked her, well, what's your name? You know, because we've been talking this long conversation, <laughs> you know, and a lot of it was mental, you know, mentally communicated or right. telepathically communicated, you know, right. and I asked her, I said, well, what's your name? Mm-hmm. And... She wrote down her name for me because I was able to come back to here consciously to Earth and actually study who she was. And she spelled her name N I Y E T, Nayata. Mm-hmm. And I told Bobby this, and Bobby added it to the list of the Orishas because he was saying that right. that was one of the deities that was coming in as a form of the Kundalini. And he's writing his act right. because as soon, as soon as I asked her her name and she wrote it down and I was saying her name, she touched me and I orgasmed. Hmm. Right. Wow. Oh yeah. Right. You know, so right. So that was straight Kundalini energy, and that's right. what she was telling me. 
And so that was the first time she came to me in that regard, and that was years ago. That was, like, back in the 90s. But, you know, it was the fact that that's when she began coming to me, personifying herself, you know what I'm saying, through my dreams that I was consciously aware of. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it wasn't Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Others, but, mm-hmm. now, that makes it, so it much important? sense. Mm-hmm. I was, I was going to add one. That, that makes so much sense. Excuse me, one second. I was going to add one thing. See, that makes so much sense because in some of the older mythologies, like now you see Kali, like she's on this blood rampage, and she would just lays down. She sees him and she stops. But in the older ones, she actually she lays down. She sits on his penis, and that kind of. So when you bring the sexual aspect in, that was in, you know what I mean? But they kind of just say, well, he he just lays down. I just wanted to add that to I'm sorry, it's just for cutting you yeah. off. No, no, no. no my, my last question, I'll, I'll let you guys go. The question is, is that, okay, if Kali or if any deity comes to you, is it important for you to allow them to come to you, or can you actually reach out and connect with them? Um, oh, I, well, I know Liam may want to speak on it too, but definitely reach. it's a level. It's a level. My whole uh, my whole thing was talking to spirits. The first level I was able to talk to were relatives, sex, second ancestors, and was blotchy every once in a while, archetype figures, which are gods, mm-hmm. meaning goddess of love, goddess of this, meaning they have a big role more than personal. So my yacht and all of them were the first to sporadically start coming. Right. And then, and so for maybe about a year, they would come to me. Then I said, wait a minute, I'm going to try to get somebody. The first person I tried to get, Get with. I put on an own CD, um, went into deep meditation, was Phyllis Hyman. And what I did was just listen to her music before I started, you know, maybe a week before I started, read her stories, seen mm-hmm. all the pictures I could see, got it. Sure enough, she came through with probably some of the most powerful shit, the most powerful visions ever. I've seen all our priesthoods and everyone who's talking who I know now. I've seen what priesthood they was in. I've seen us in Cam, I seen uh, in everybody a lean. I, I could at the time I could go back, but I remember the lean. Everybody, the only one person, oddly enough, and I'll say it that I couldn't see back then was Brother Dawood. But every I seen with this, I seen stories, I seen relations. This is from her when I first tried to reach out. So reaching out to make it simpler, um, what you want to do is surround yourself in the image. Let's say you want to reach out to Marvin Gaye, or he left you a gateway, his music and his images. You do that, and what you'll start to hear is is a line in your head that seems out of sync with your thoughts. First, right. it'll be in your own voice. You'll be thinking, going to the store, going to the thing, going to that. Look to the left. You'll just hear that out the blue. Mm-hmm. Then you look to the left, and you may see a tree or, or something or a color or something that strikes you. You may not even know what it is, blah, blah, blah. And then after a while, when you lay down and rest your thoughts, you might hear a conversation. You'll hear a man's voice. It will get more and more as you walk towards it. But the whole point absolutely is to reach out to these deities. Eventually they'll come to you once you start your pioneer work because your gateway is starting to open. But eventually you want to be able to send a message out. And all they are are just nothing but energy, life, as Brother Lean was talking about. But they left methodology. Jimi Hendrix left all his music. That's how you reach him. So and remember, why all of these stars? Because we always return at the, as the gods. But in mm-hmm. our deficient state in this particular time, we couldn't return as Malcolm X or Journey the Truth, Nat Turner, and, and Marcus Garvey. And they, so we return as Muhammad Ali, Jimi Hendrix, Prince. All the gods return as entertainers because that's where we still show our god prowess. So most of those entertainers that came and changed were the gods returned. A little bit before that were these Huey P. Newtons and Bobby Seals. Those were the gods returned for that particular time. Elijah Muhammad, Brother Malcolm X, you know, so on and so forth. So, again, most of these gods came with the last, this creative thing in these last days. So most of them are the ones who come to me or I get with them. And you want to deal with them. I, I've even said this is maybe a little bit controversial, even more than what we call the Mayat, Oshun, Osiris, mm-hmm. Kali. You kind of want to get with the motherfuckers who is just here because they they are those same gods or energy forms or energy templates that are actually configured to our situation because they were just here. So they could serve you better. Kali's never been on earth. She's just doing her template shit. You mm-hmm. get what I'm saying? But Tina Turner has, so when Tina Turner goes, 
if mm-hmm. if we're gonna let's pretend she's a Kali figure for whatever reason, she's more of a Oya, which is still Kali, but let's she's an Oya figure. So instead of getting with the, the template Oya who's never been on Earth, you can get with an Oya energy who has, which would be Tina Turner, and you get a lot of you get a lot of shit done. You know what I'm saying? If you're trying to do some Oya shit, of course that's controversial because people are still religify, but but I'm sure you can get the concept. Definitely right, try to right. get with them. Definitely try to get with them. That's definitely the next next step. If Kali's coming to you like that, then all you do is just you just make a Kali area. You know, see, like, let's say you're trying to get with Marvin Gaye, find out what food he likes. It's probably right. on Wikipedia. See the color he wore. See this. Play some Tammy Terrell. That was his girl. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to you want to make everything. See, Bobby Hemmings showed me that whenever. He's dealing with a deity. He gets fucking obsessed with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, Lord, when that Baron Zombie <laughs> came through, I got a call every 35 seconds. Guess what? <laughs> Guess what? Guess what? And, but but he gets so much out of it because then I realized that's what you have to do. You have to be. Yeah. He was so obsessed that I became obsessed with the shit. Call him. Guess what, man? Flavor Flav is Baron Zombie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's like, oh, man, it's interesting. You said that. Look. He's he's mad. He's married to Bridget. Flavor Flav was married to Bridget. I said uh, he called the Gator. That's the Gator. This nigga wore fucking top hats and and clocks. I'm telling you, I'm telling. You're like, God damn. Mm-hmm. Like so. In other words, you got to be just so excited and into it that right. you see everything that way, and you will start to see everything that way because it's really there yeah, the whole time. Yeah, my man, yeah, my man Darren in um, London um, 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 on it too. Oh yeah, oh okay. yeah, okay. yeah. That yeah, it got with that. Like I started having dreams about this nigga yeah. as one of us, and then I yeah. talked to Darren once. Said, "Yo, no, you was one of you was in the same priest, and you was this, that, the other." Mm-hmm. Then, then this same ring that we had, Bobby let. I said, "Well, he's in the same priesthood." And then Baba Rob uh, Carnazares came through, and goddamn Marie Laveau. Oh man, right. these niggas, you, they hit me up. I mean, you're panicking, you're panicking, you're panicking, panicking. It's just that, and that's the Marie Laveau shit. And it's fun because you will see that world. You get what I'm saying? Right, Because right. it's really a joyous world. It's a fun world. It's really not that deep. See, a lot of people fuck up because they try to get in there, boom, ba ba room, and, mm-hmm. and Kali has come today. Fuck all of that. The the One of the first was my yacht. When I got in it, when my yacht came to me, this was before I could even get to people, I'm sitting there going, Oh, wisdom wise one who comes forth, who brings mm-hmm. reciprocity, that brings forth balance, that comes throughout, that reverberates through. She said, What the fuck are you talking about? And I was like, Well, <laughs> what do you want then, bitch? She said, Oh, now we can get down to business. And then when I came like, out of that trance, wow. I said, I totally get it. All of them extra words and trying to be right. deep. Niggas don't talk that way for real. So what? these mm-hmm. spirits is nothing but you. Why would you do that? Right. That's a fantasy. You get what I'm saying? That's a fantasy to look kind of smart. So it's really about keeping playing. It's a fun fucking world. For instance, like um, when I went to the lecture scene and lately, it's really a party now. And I'm like, there's nothing wrong with that because spiritually, we are moving into where we are in a celebratory stage. Right. I said, it shouldn't be bad for us to say, all right, we're going to listen to the lecture or even – we we're gonna we're gonna have a get together on Saturday. The lecturer will talk and we can dance our asses off. And Sunday we have our learning because we're, we're in a party. Like everybody, because now that I'm looking for the lecture place, everybody's showing me these things. I'm like, nigga, where's the DJ at? You know what I'm saying? But they're trying to still <laughs> rope me in with knowledge. But the speaker, <laughs> like, look, I say I, I get it that we always had the theme of the speaker. But there's always been a party in the hallway at all these mm-hmm. goddamn lectures. Anyway, we shouldn't need to feel bad about socially interacting with each other as well. Facebook and MySpace prove that we did. So, but why I do get it is because when I do get into that spiritual place, the motherfuckers is partying. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There's, they, they, the knowledge I get that the ones who I did deal with or talk to, they tell me about this world. But after that, they're like, what you doing, nigga? Like, you know what I'm saying? It's really some, like, look, this is what that means. That's what's happening. It's, don't worry about chemtrails. That ain't going to work. They told me you should worry more about movies than chemtrails. Oscar the show. I mean, I've been going for days about transmissions. 
But but at the end of the day, it's right. always this fun party shit. When you come with that loose mentality, you cannot be tight. You can talk to anybody. You can do anything Definitely. when you be yourself. You know what I'm saying? You just come regular. Talk regular. You just, this, the, the, in, in the book Chaos Magic, Phil Hind, or either other one by P- Peter Carroll, one of the big sayings in all of these, if people have followed Chaos Magic now as a religion, white people, because Chaos Magic is nothing but melanin magic, so they're saying that just do, do whatever you want. Another line, do as thou wilt from the book of the law, and the Chaos Magic line is fake it until you make it, which is a sign, which sounds stupid, but it's, it's some science meaning. Ooh. The more you fake what you're doing, the more it becomes real. So if you ain't, if you feel you're not talking to Marvin Gaye, you better act like you're talking to Marvin Gaye. And before you know it, you'll be talking to Marvin Gaye. Right. So you'll be walking around, oh, Marvin, you're so crazy. I found a gumball. Oh, thanks, Marvin, for the $5 I found in my pocket. Mm-hmm. Just say it. You get what I'm saying? And before you know it, you'll be sitting around going, mercy, mercy me, you know, <laughs> you know, for real, for real. So it's, 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 it's as the same thing Brother Lehman and I was talking about earlier in terms of a lot is our own mind. Like he said, the, the woman has all of these levels of elixirs in her, but but um, but based upon her mind is why these elixirs are trapped. You know, you're not supposed to be doing it. So, you know, so most people take it too serious, think that it's not really that hard. This is our divine mind, our divine birthright. We have the mechanisms for any of that. It's just activate them, and you activate them with your thoughts. You get what I'm saying? So the answer is be like, never should be, should I contact them, but when I do contact them, because I'm about right. to contact them. You're right. You get what I'm saying? As a matter of fact, I already contacted them. You, you get what I'm saying? It's, 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 even, it's, see, this, you can find a lot of that science, believe it or not, in those self-help books, which are just watered down the cult books. When they mm-hmm. tell you, if you want a red Corvette, Put the red Corvette up, get the car, the hang out with right red now. Corvette motherfuckers, get new car smell, get the black leather gloves, get a red jacket and the glasses, and walk around Corvette, put number Corvette pictures up, and before you know it, the Corvette will somehow materialize. Because what they're doing yeah, is saying, they're not they're wish they're... or will it. They're not saying not wish or will it. They're saying live in it right now. That's what all that living in the now is. Mm-hmm. Don't see... This, so the right. idea is, on another level, not to say I'm about to contact these motherfuckers. Say I could talk to these motherfuckers right now. Right. Shit. And and after a while, a motherfucker got the answer back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Or or even better, you just understand the answer back. You know what I'm saying? Because they always answer back. You just It's just a matter of you being able to hear it and see it. You see that through the pineal. And, again, if it's atrophied, yep. that, that's where the issue is. You get what I'm saying? Right. So now, everything panic, should be now, wake up that fire. To what you were saying. That correlates right. to what you were saying before. The subconscious mind symbolizes what? The underworld, which is the realm right. of all sorts. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So you, right. um what 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 is it being brought forth? Remember the, the, the mind doesn't know the difference between what's fantasy and what's reality. All right. it knows right. is what you program it. So the subconscious right. mind doesn't know the difference. It just knows what you program it. So right. in order to tap into right. that sorry and power and energy, you have to program it so all song, which is your divine soul, can manifest what you want into this right. reality. Right, through it, into through it, right, to, get, to, to use it to get what you, to, right, to use it to get right. what you want. Now, now I'm glad Ali brought that up. The imagination is real and therefore is real. Now, this brings us to this. This, uh, uh, a reality it is nothing more than an imagination. It is not real. Therefore, whatever you can imagine is as real as this real. fantasy mm-hmm. is. So, for instance, you ever talk to a motherfucker? I mean, think about, well, think about it like this. If I said that fire hydrant is green and you said mm-hmm. it's red, that's not right or wrong because I'm going to live my lifestyle saying it's green. You're only saying it's red because everyone uh, uh, Agrees with that, or if 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 somebody told me an Oreo cookie, you know, was a was a college degree from when I was little, I'm gonna have. So, in other words, this shit is just as fake as your belief. Well, right. our belief or what we're calling reality is what other people agree with the most. You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So, in other words, none of this is real. So, for instance, it's just as valid to make up a fake conversation with Marvin Gaye as long as what you get out of it. You're wiser than when you walked in, when you started it, is just as valid. You get what I'm saying? So, in other words, I could be talking to, to, to my wall, but, uh, well, let's even make it more practical. 
All Nostradamus did was talk to a, a bowl of black water. You get what I'm saying? Right. Right. And all of that came out. So on a practical level, you said, well, all he was doing was looking at what they call scrying, but looking into a bowl of water, but look at all he got. Now, for some people, they'll say, well, I can see that exactly in that prediction, and some people will say, that ain't nothing to do with nothing, Me- meaning the reality is too far for you to put your money on what reality is. If, and, for instance, they'll tell you all the time, they tell you this in self-help books, um, if if all if if everyone in this room seen one car accident, the cop would find a different story from everyone who witnessed the same event. Meaning, if they're trying to chase what we call reality, that's failing because we could witness the same thing. For, oh, even better example: half the black people said Rodney King was getting his ass whipped. White people said he was trying to get up and escape. You get what I'm saying? And this is right. one same event. So we bet now money on reality. That's the wrong thing to bet with. Well, you could be talking to this or that or talking to the wrong spirit. You judge this based upon results. You get what I'm saying? Based upon exactly. results. Marvin Gaye lives within your own subconscious mind. So yeah, you can you always, it's already you. there. It's yeah. already there. You get what I'm saying? Who, or who, whomever. The, you're only talking, let's say you're talking to Oshun. You're only talking to the love within yourself. You just gave it the name Oshun so you have a physical way to access it. This is her color. This is her day. This is this this is right. her characteristic. This is her element. This is her jewel. This is her perfume. Those are just physical ways, or just really rituals, to get into the invisible world of love, which is in you. So you, you say, I can't find a husband. Put Oshun in your room. All you did was just tap into your own love. You know what I mean? And and so it, so talking to him is absolutely that's 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 just as easy as doing anything else as long as your mind is ready for it. You get what I'm saying? And when, like I said, the key is if you don't take it serious because you cannot be more serious with them than you are with yourself. You get what right. I'm saying? And I know this is one and on, but only one more thing to add. Um, Slick Rick said this shit, and it made me think of it. Slick Rick said every single hip-hop B-boy, you know what I'm saying, world is born, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, all that slang. He said everyone by their nature is fronting. Because you would not do it in front of your mother. And if you would not do that in front of your mother, that means you're acting. That the, the, the realest you can get, the person you could get with is your mother. So, so I said, well, that makes sense. Now, if you apply to the whole tip and the Buragani and all of these greetings, you would not do that to your mother, which means you're trying to show something when you're saying these, 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 these lingos and languages. So now you have to do that with spirituality. If you are serious, I am that I am, and go forth that comes forth. You wouldn't do if you do, if you sit there and talk to your own self like that. Then you could probably contact some spirits like that. But if you don't talk to your own self with saying "hotep" and "I am forth that comes mm-hmm. within," then you can't front when you talk into these spirits because these spirits reside in you, and they only respond to the true you. Right. So again, what I was saying with my eyes. Those that comes forth, this and that. I don't even call my own wife, who I love to death, that. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Look, motherfucker, you need to put the spoon up. I'm a, my queen who walks forth and comes back beyond. Can you pass thou a spoon? You, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's no yeah. reason to say all that bullshit on Facebook. Oh, queen, your hair is, the, you know, all right, nice hair. In other words, keeping it plain is how you get in because you can't front on yourself. You can't yeah. front on yourself. So I know that was long. But 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 I think it was no, a valid you know, I think it was a valid understanding, you know. Thank you, Panic. Thank you, Doctor Bay. Yeah. I'm in Charlotte. Oh, well, so appreciate I'm close to you. Appreciate you. Right. Thank you for listening. Peace. We got another caller here and it's area code four six nine. Area code four six nine, you're on the line. Greetings, Doctor Bay. Greetings, our brother Greetings. Panic. Um, yeah. I had a question to find out what something represented to and that was um, it was last month when I went to lie down and I was meditating and my whole body was very, it, it kind of went numb. It's like I even think my heart stopped beating. But even in the process of all of that, it was this really dark, like genie out of the bottle kind of thing. And it was a dark uh, fall, really thick, and it was moving toward me. And I actually allowed it to uh, rub against my face and my arm that um mm-hmm. Even the, the pressure, the pressure of it is what like, woke me up. And I was wanting to know yeah. what that was about. 
I mean, I, Aline, do you want to speak on it? But I mean, I have some information on that. If you want, oh no, go ahead. Want, but, um, if, if okay, go on and go on and hit okay. up with it. <laughs> that's something. That's something called sleep paralysis. And usually, mm-hmm. what that is, when when you go to sleep, your spirit actually by that cord in your, in, in your solar plexus, it leaves the body, and you're in the mm-hmm. astral world. That's where you dream. Mm-hmm. The idea of astral traveling, and which then leads you into lucid dreaming. What happens is. For most of us, we're dead tired or we're not doing anything. Most of our consciousness stays in the human body, and that's why we don't remember our dreams or remember them sporadically, or sometimes we remember them but can't make heads or tails of them because we haven't started getting in that lucid state. So now, when you're waking up, your spirit is slowly going back into your body because your spirit is what animates it. But if you become awake or aware before your full spirit gets in, you start to experience exactly everything that you describe, the pressure, yeah. um, mm-hmm. the, the, you, you'll see the deities, and, and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. Now, um, mm-hmm. you know, people always remember that pattern. It was just this profound experience. I'm like, no, but that experience can become profound once you see, once I realized what this was, because, you know, I would be like anybody else trying to get up, that's when you feel the pressure. You'd be all fucked up over that. Mm-hmm. Then... The first time, um, once I started getting a lucid dream and I had a girlfriend, was sleeping together, and I was in her house, and this was the first time we spent the night in the same room. And early on when I was channeled, as soon as I was able to get to that ancestor realm, thousands of ancestors would come, and especially when I was with a girlfriend. And all of them would start telling me shit to do for them because they couldn't contact. Tell her to put some water here. Tell her to move the couch. Tell her to change her. She's got to quit that job. Don't mess with Lisa. I, so I never got any sleep that first night. This first night, I'm starting to drift off, and I seen a baby come right out the wall and jump right on me, give me the pressure. But since I started getting into the lucid, I said, oh, I'm still asleep. Let me wait mm-hmm. and not try to move and be all fucked up and wait till my spirit comes back, boom, waited, boom, got up. It felt that I pushed the baby off, went to the bathroom, came back, woke up, said, did a baby die in, in here? She's like, no, 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 no. I said, there's a baby that's coming. It was actually twins. They were fucking around, stepping on me, my spirit, and all this kind of shit. And then she yeah. said, oh, she just had, she had a miscarriage before. I said, well, those babies are still around. You're protecting me. So mm. maybe two more times I was able to know I was still asleep and get into this and, and felt myself waking up because it was a occupational hazard once I started becoming more aware of the sleep-wake state. It became, mm-hmm. I bet sleep paralysis started happening. But then one of the things I did when I was dealing with the Necronomicon around um, uh, uh, on a Halloween, maybe about 2008, Nirulahotep is the deity that speaks. Uh, the, the Necronomicon deities or pantheon just represents the deepest reaches of your subconscious mind. The ne- mm-hmm. um, Nirulahotep is the deity that can speak between the both worlds. So if you're going to contact Necronomicon energy, you got to see him. So I was doing some meditation, and I, I even remember I was listening to Frank Joseph's uh, 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 white guy talk about uh, Lemuria. I was watching that. So let me get into this meditation, Nirlahotep, and seeing Nirlahotep come and was in that sleep paralysis state. But instead of waking myself up, I said, hold on, I'm going to see where I'm going to go with this shit. I stayed right. in that sleep paralysis state and seeing this motherfucker come in, he was talking. I, it, it didn't last long, maybe about three minutes, because you in, you in the zone of coming out of it. But I just held mm-hmm. on to it. So mm-hmm. it was probably mm-hmm. one of the most profound out-of-bodies that I had, because you're still out of body, but you're totally awake. So, mm-hmm. in other words, you still can master sleep paralysis, but that's what that experience is. And that's happening because you are starting to become conscious in those worlds. When I first started yeah. tapping into lucid dreams, what was before I even knew there was such a thing, I was tapping into lucid dreams. What would be happening was in the dreams, I would be start reaching for like my camera phone to take pictures. I was doing, I was actually bringing stuff from this world into my dreams. In other words, the worlds were merging together. And this, and yeah. I didn't. So I often say lucid dreams are. A, uh, a result of when you practice in astral traveling. One of the best astral right. traveling books I have is Robert Bruce, uh, uh, 
um, astral d- dynamics. He gives a step by step and do this, do that. He speaks in plain English. Robert Bruce Astral Dynamics. That other astral travel book by Ross, Larry Ross, and, and Yvonne Ross. That's pretty good too. It picks up in the middle where it starts telling you astral stories and some. They they said they used to go by churches and see thousands of spirits at churches waiting for something to happen. Mm. Because the astral world, if you look at the movie Where Dreams May Come, is basically a mirror vision of this world. They'll tell you, uh, they'll tell you Yaldabroth, which created this world, used the astral world as his throne and his footstool is earth. So technically, Mm. if we was in an ignorant state, we would just be going to the astral world and incarnating again in this cycle. But we're beyond that now. That astral world Mm. is burning up. Um, and, and of course, you see how dry the earth is. So these worlds are burning up, and, we, and we're forced to go beyond that reality. In that movie, it was represented as the ship um, in What Dreams May Come, and he was like, no, it's seen over there. So the idea is um, to start um, get deep into astral traveling. You can use the same technique as I gave with the apple, but you, you just want to eventually get to where you're in your car, then I, someplace you never went, Eiffel Tower. Just see it, like fake it till you make it, pretend what it looks like, and you're actually doing it. It's not about the success of being at the Eiffel Tower. It's about exercising your pineal. There's a difference. You get what I'm saying? So by exercising is what you're doing. You're not really trying to be, oh, success. I seen something at the Eiffel Tower that I would have never seen, so I know because I've seen it in my dream. That's not really the success you're looking for Um, because they'll tell you in lucid dreaming, which is, is uh, it's true, but it's not really what you're shooting for. They tell you lucid dreaming is you sit there in the dream and say, I know I'm dreaming. I'm going to move my hand. I'm going to turn around. I'm like, well, if you could do that, you might as well be awake doing the same dumb mm-hmm. shit. The idea is to be mm-hmm. in your subconscious mind and to be able to read where it takes you. See, now I'm aware that I'm dreaming, but it's like I'm an audience member. And when I wake up, I have detailed information, detailed names. So, and I'm not altering the dreams, though I've done that before. There was a dream I was getting arrested. I said, no, I don't like this motherfucker. Let me dream about something else. It was like, oh, mm-hmm. shit, I didn't. I, Let me tell you, I did that three times. So, right. I, I, that can be done, but I'm like, I don't want to spend, you know, that's not the work because after a while, all I'm going to do is the same shit that I do when I'm awake. And that's not getting well, it. So it's about real. Uh huh. Okay, but well, can you have? That's okay. Can you have sleep mm-hmm. paralysis without actually being asleep? Um. Well, exactly remember, you listen. What mm-hmm. you, It's the same concept. You're you're letting your spirit leave your body. So depending oh, on how okay. deep. So so mm-hmm. your your spirit is what animates you. Usually, when mm-hmm. you meditate, there's still some sort of awareness depending on how deep you could go, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So, yeah, or like I said, or like I said, you could have been in that. See, the idea is this world that you've seen is all around you. That's what we were talking about when the leaves said there are colors and lights all around you. With your regular Mm. eyes, you are locked in a seven-band light spectrum. You cannot see Mm. infrared with your common eye, which they use for remotes, and you can't see ultraviolet which is that shit they use to find sperm stains in hotels. Right. You see okay. violet as the top and red as the bottom. You are in that light matrix. The all-seeing mm-hmm. eye is your third eye, your pineal. Mm-hmm. So your pineal mm-hmm. sees all colors, which are the spirit world. Simple mm-hmm. as that. So if you're in the spirit world, you're seeing this. And, and if, you are, if you see, it sounds like even if you're meditating, you've seen something that wasn't necessarily alarming but maybe profound enough where your body, you were trying to move your body, and you feel the pressure. Mm-hmm. And, it's, you know, if okay. you look up sleep paralysis, it's the sheer definition of it. You get what I'm saying? Which I say is not mm-hmm. a bad thing, or and it does not take away from the profound experience you had. The only mm-hmm. reason you were feeling the discomfort is because your spirit is coming in your body. But if you can okay. stay, that's why I went into the detail about you being able to stay in this state or right. being able to mm-hmm. control this state because you still mm-hmm. will get a profound. I said one of the most expound, profound experience I had with Nira Lahotep is when I was in mm-hmm. sleep paralysis, meaning mm-hmm. all, you, what you're trying to do through lucid dreaming and through astral travel is control that state, that state where you are aware that you are outside of your body. 
So, you, so mm. when you move, the, I, when people start to move the body is when they feel that pressure because you're actually moving something that can't be, it, it, it's animated by the spirit and the spirit hasn't totally returned. So you were in a deep okay. meditation if you weren't asleep. Mm. Uh-huh. So, the, right. okay, so and, that, and, black, and, that black and, spirit, mm-hmm. so, the black, the, so the black, the black fog of the whole thing, it was like a, a black fog spirit, whatever you want to call it, that is what brushed up against my face and on my arm, and that's what actually awakened me. That's what actually right. opened I mean, up my eyes. Okay, okay. I, I, I mean, really I mean it, I, see, see, it's, 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 it's all symbolic. I mean, I've seen so many right, right. small Egyptians. I've seen beetles. I've seen actual fairies where I was trying to clap them shits with my hand one time. It could be anything. You kind of got to see what it means to you sometimes. You know what I, I mean? I got you. How do you felt? What, what, whatever epiphany happened, whatever you didn't know and you know now what it was. It's it's how mm-hmm. spirit moves, too, in all forms. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I was pissed because it touched me. It just should have let me just look at it. So, yeah, that's how I felt. <laughs> Like okay. it's all you. After all, yeah. uh, and let me just say this: after everything everybody said about dog spirits and this spirits, malevol- male- malevolent spirits, there's never one person out of all the thousands at this point who's emailed me, I talked to, who said I'm all fucked up because mm-hmm. I did something you did or meditate or what. They what I do get is look, I was fucked up ever since I was five. <laughs> How do I get unfucked? Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've never okay. seen nothing. I've never seen nothing mm-hmm. that came and was like, oh, my God, what's that? That thing. Right. And this, that. Mm-hmm. There are low energy spirits, of course, but if you're doing mm-hmm. this work and you have low energy, you, you already contradict. The work we talk about, you, you are of a more, before you can even start, by listening to Brother Lean, Brother Phil, Brother Bobby, uh, and, and, and a host load of others, your vibrations already at a rate where you're not even talking about low energy. That low energy right. attacks these regular human motherfuckers. That's why they all mm-hmm. go into jail. They all go into uh, 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 mental institutions and job losing. Now, all this could happen to us. We're on earth, but we recover based upon our mm-hmm. vibrations. Mm-hmm. So by the time you get into the spiritual work, there's nothing that's going to touch you that you're going to be like, oh, I'm touching. That's over. Usually when people mm-hmm. do that, you'll find at the end of that, five ninety nine for me to help you through this. You get what I'm saying? Right. PayPal right, me for right. that. Usually when you hear that, you can't do it. You'll hear shit like, well, you can't do this without experience such and such. Call me. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and you'll find yourself either taking out your credit card or taking off your drawers, one or the other, and that's real talk. <laughs> so the idea is, see, nobody really wants to say this is all within you. You can do it in yourself. There's nothing to fear but fear yourself. Only thing I recommend is you read and study before you get into anything that you're doing like you would do anything. You wouldn't try right. to drive a tractor trailer without reading and studying. The difference right, is nobody's right. going to say nobody's going to say you'll be spooked forever if you don't do it right. Mm-hmm. All of that's from right. TV and scare tactics. Mm-hmm. So something touching you, believe you me, is something's touching your spirit and your aura all the time. Your thoughts right. control what enters and leaves your aura. If you say, damn, mm-hmm. I'm always unlucky, unlucky will enter your aura. You just call it unlucky. Mm-hmm. If you say, I'm always lucky, then it will enter your aura. So something's always touching you, always around mm-hmm. you, just we're not right. aware of it based upon right. you can't right. see that color spectrum. You get what I'm saying? Right. So this right. idea okay. is to make it aware of it and control it and understand that all of these smokes and, and all of these things, these smokes and and black smoke and black fog, it's hard to define that. So the Egyptians gave names, Horus, Osiris, Isis, Sekhmet, mm-hmm. Serket, gotcha. you know what I mean? These mm-hmm. names, mm-hmm. so when you focus on what, let's just say, Sekhmet is, you know, it's a Kundalini life force energy, uh, visualizes this and this is a color and this is a consort, that lets you mm-hmm. control whatever is touching you. You get what I'm saying? Right. That's why they were so okay. detailed in naming everything. So instead of saying, well, it was some smoke, you get to say, well, I was meditating on segment, so that smoke was segment. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That's the idea okay. of being conscious. That's the idea of being conscious of this stuff and know why you're going to sit down every time when you meditate. Always sit down, meditate with a purpose, with a goal. You get what I'm saying? All right. With, with an idea. We got about okay. 10 minutes left, and we got two more callers who's trying to get on it, ask some questions. So I right. uh, appreciate you guys for, um, you know, taking time and thinking um, about us and listening. Um, but I'm going to go to these next callers here and then finish up the show. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yes. 
Peace. All right, right. Peace, sister, too. All right, we're going to call us 732-732. You're on the line. Starting with 732. All right, we're going to go to 904. 904, you're on the line. 904, beginning at 904, area code. Nine zero four. All right, I guess we could have um kept on then. Uh, I don't know what's going okay. on, but um, yeah, some of them just will listen. But well, I would right, say this right. too, brother Lee, that this, yeah. I, if we're dealing with this, still want to deal with this subject, maybe we need to do a part two because oh, we are. There's still oh, a few things I, oh, I have on it. Fact, you know what I mean? Matter of fact, matter of fact, we're gonna do that next week. Um, we okay. do part two of this coming on um, Wednesday, cause right okay. now, man, we ran out of time. It's, it's almost eleven right now, so um, yeah, man, I appreciate you coming yeah. on. And uh, man, yeah, I mean, I you know, everybody in the chat room is saying how good this, um, how good this, um, you know, this session was, and um, they really That's appreciate good. you. You know, what I'm saying they like, you know, panic dropping it. Man, you know, so they all like that in the chat room. Oh, so, um, I, I, yeah, didn't know, I didn't even know the chat room. Open. Feedback here. Oh, oh yeah, right. I didn't even oh, know man. the chat. Okay, I didn't, yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. know it was open. Right. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah I, mean, I mean, I'm glad. I'm, 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 but I just want to say before, if we get cut off or anything, I'm actually always glad to be a part of anything you have going on. Like I said, I say it again, I'll say it a thousand times. You were one of my earliest teachers, one of the best I found. I was, that enabled me, so anything, you know, my honor to be here, actually. You know what I mean? So I just want to definitely thank you for having me as well. Well, for those who don't know, I first met Panic in 2004. Um, right. Thanks to Brother Shabazz. You know, we right. all had like a little round house conference amongst the um, the young masters at the time. <laughs> right, and, right, um, right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that was like January yeah, I, the 10th or January the 11th of 2004, you know. And right, like just man, a day or two right before my teacher passed, you know, as a matter right. of fact. So, mm-hmm. Wow. Wow, that's right. That is right. And, yeah, and yeah. after that, I, even before, you see, I probably was intimidated back then because I used to buy all the leave shit back then. You, if you guys don't have this collection, y'all need to get it very informative. A lot of that tantric stuff. I mean, I, I have his whole collection, you know what I mean, Seven Circuits of the Brain, a lot of information he was giving out in that store. If you don't have those DVDs, those are like basic DVDs of, of just pure information, a lot of breathing techniques, you know, a, a whole bunch of things that really will, will start you in the ground, to understand. especially with a lean because there's a lot of meditative things. And, you know, that's always been my thing. You know, I was explaining this wasn't even a conscious thing. My father had books to the ceilings on meditations and made us meditate when we was little. So this is something I've always done. So, but when I watch the lean, um, you know, it, uh, you see, I, I still see the powerful impact on a guy who was always in the meditation myself. So for the average person just getting into it, that's a must have, that's must have information. So, you know, and I can't say it enough. Be, and I only say it as much because there's some shit. I only, I only endorse shit that really works. You know what I mean? You don't never hear me talking about a lot of motherfuckers. And a lot of motherfuckers who a lot of motherfuckers like for the simple reason because I think it's a lot of good information. But, you know, you know, I talk to people who are doers. And one of, like, one of the things that enabled me was your work. So I definitely wanted to thank you for that. And, you know, and I urge people to get them DVDs from you. You know, but sure, I, I, got, I got to get them from you too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I never was, uh, you know, Shabazz used to want me to speak, but I think I was saying some phony baloney stuff or halfway stuff. But my whole idea was, well, I don't really want to do, I want to go study. So from maybe 2005 to around these last couple of years, all I did was just study. And me and Bobby became cool around those times because I was such a study whore, and he is the book for everything guy. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so, you know, and, you know, I think he recognized I would go into my 
own study subject, and then he was very yeah. helpful. Get that book, get that book, get that book. So when I and he was very good at giving me history on it, which gave me a lot of shortcut. You know what I mean? Like yeah. instead of reading this, he would say, "Well, that person." And and I like the way he did it because he wouldn't say, "Don't get that." He would say, "Well, this person when they did it, they were reacting to that." He just had a lot of uh, history on the authors, so he's like, "They would react to that." So they're really speaking on this, and they're speaking on that, and blah, 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 blah. So he really streamlined me into a, a, a fast-paced uh, study, you know what I mean? So I always appreciate him for that. That's why I like to point out, because, you know, um, I, I, we basically talk about the same occult subject. So, you know, I make it clear every time I open my mouth, if you, there's some, this has already been discussed or laid down from this perspective. So when the brother was saying, I want to get panicked the credit, I'm like, no, we really have to give the credit where the credit is due. I would go as far as to say um, maybe my generation has added a, a, a different way of saying it in another perspective, but the foundation to who laid this information down clearly documented has been Bobby Henry. You ain't, there's no way you're going to get around that. You know what I mean? Oh, so and I, I really try to... Right, as far as on um, DVD... Um, Bobby mm -hmm. is the one who broke everyone out of that shell. I mean, even though right. one of the first I think it actually was Brother Dao, you know, and right. that was from like eighty eight, eighty nine, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then Phil and then Bobby right after that and then later on Hakeem right. Bay. They was all around right. in that same, you know, five year span. Area. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. From around ninety to ninety five. And mm -hmm. whatever you know, based on whatever was taking place, I mean, of course, we know that was a big um, Afrocentric time anyway. Right. Everybody was walking right. around the Black Madonna. The music reflected what was going on in the streets and on the college campuses and in the schools and elsewhere. I mean, so everything was correlating perfectly to hip-hop actually being a modem for spiritual transformation, you know. Right. And then something happened right. during that same time period of our awakening, you know what I'm saying, which was in the late 80s to the mid-90s, and they brought in something to create opposition mm -hmm. towards that, in which that got, you know, those who was into uh, finding self and getting pride, you know, um, got us off the, some, mm -hmm. you know, got some of us off the path, you know what I'm saying? Right. And what we're seeing is that this is the result of those who stayed on the path. Right, right, <laughs> that's all, that's right, all that is. right. You know what I'm saying? Right, mm -hmm. right. First of all, all the radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always gonna be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. For seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns and existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient mystery school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, 
ready, y'all. Some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. <laughs>